Sportsman. Well, good evening and welcome to a tremendous night here at Bulldog Stadium. It is a crisp, cool evening and perfect for football. And it's a, uh, a big matchup with Howe and Leonard. And the winner moves on for the uh, second place finish. The loser will take the third place finish. And Leonard comes in with a hefty 7-1 and one record. But having lost to Gunner a couple of weeks ago, they really struggled last week against Tom Bean. And uh, uh, ended up going to double overtime last week, Michael, and, and it was kind of strange watching from White Wright. We were watching the scores, and uh, we were kind of shocked about Tom Bean and Leonard last week, weren't we? Yeah, we were. That was uh, that was a shock. I I didn't. I guess I didn't realize they went into double overtime. But yeah, that's that's uh, that is a shock. Yeah, most times when a when a team who's only lost one game goes up against uh, Tom Bean, who let's just face it, how really handled Tom Bean about as well as as how has handled anyone in the history of the school. Uh, but Tom Bean showed up that night for sure and played Leonard a great game. And we expect uh, to see a great game tonight from the Leonard Tigers and the Howe Bulldogs. Howe coming in at 5-4 and four on the year, 3-1 and one in district. Leonard also 3-1 and one in district. They're only lost to Gunner. Howe's only lost is to Gunner. And uh, the playoffs await both teams starting next week. If Howe wins, it looks like Howe would probably play uh, Cooper, and if Hal loses, it looks like they would probably play Alba Golden, uh, or it could be in reverse. It depends on what happens over there in their district as well. Yeah, and um, they're talking about those being a Thursday and a Friday, possibly. Possibly, and it looks like uh, it could be either Paris or uh, Royce City. Uh, for possible locations, and Coach Hudson would, said that he would uh, know tonight. The coaches are going to go to Greenville after this football game and meet over there to find out where the location and when the location of the football game will be for the playoffs. It will be the first playoff game for Howe since 2010. We've got the coaches show coming up next. We'll talk to Coach Zach Hudson about those crazy injuries, and we'll get more into that at the, as the uh, broadcast goes on. But let's talk to Coach Hudson here in just a moment. We'll be back with more Howl Bulldog football Rogers. in just a moment. Being escorted by Trisha and Tracy Fields. Abby's Restaurant is family owned and run. They have the cure for all your home cooking cravings. Chicken fried steak, loaded baked potato, bacon patty melt, grilled chicken salad, cheese fries, jalapeno stuffed peppers, and more. Don't forget to save room for that cheesecake and cobbler with ice cream. We know you're going to love the food and the service. Abby's Restaurant in downtown Howe. They're open from 11 to 8, Monday through Saturday. Give them a call, 903-487-8860. Abby's Restaurant. The Bulldogs make the playoffs and you get the payoff. Hi, this is Chris with Cavender Home Theater. Through November, we're going to give you a $100 Visa gift card just for signing up for Dish with Cavender Home Theater. That's on top of $400 in discounts and free installation. So get the hopper with the best DVR, more HD channels, commercial skip on recorded primetime shows, and lots of apps like Sports Finder and TV Anywhere. Upgrade your home and save money. Visit us at CavenderTV.com or call us at 901. 3-892-3499. Local service is always better. Go Bulldogs! For my Welcome to the Bulldogs Coaches Show, featuring Hal, Athletic Director and Head Coach, Zach Hudson. Coach, a big win versus White Wright last week, 38 to nothing. You rush for more than 400 yards again, and when you rush for more than 206, you're undefeated this year. So I'm sure you're happy about that. It is, and we look at that. It's uh, one of those things that we have to control the football. Running the offense we run, we're not a, a big strike offense, but when we control the football, uh, we give ourselves a better chance to win. So, uh, you know, anytime we hit that 300 mark, we know, we, you know we're in a good spot. Being a defensive guy, you're probably more impressed with the third shutout that you've had here in the uh, last two years. Well, it, you know, we, we have some expectations. And, uh, you know, our kids are playing well and they play hard. Uh, and as long as we keep playing hard, things like that will happen. 
Now, what we, we don't want to talk about, but we have to, the injuries that happened last week, the torn ACL, Stratton Carroll and Minivar. Who steps up there? Uh, we have a lot of different kids uh, that have been playing there the whole time anyway, uh, you know, backing them up in practice and, and also in the games. We rotate our defensive linemen quite often. So, uh, you know, stepping up for Minivar, we have a couple of kids uh, that will step in. We're going to uh, move some defensive ends around and put them back at tackle and, and things like that just to keep a rotation for them. Uh, as far as uh, Stratton goes, we have a couple of uh, kids that will step up and have been playing that position. So, uh, you know, Brandon Wall and, and Jaden Matthews. So, uh, you know, we feel comfortable with them playing. Of course, you know, we hate to see uh, kids out at any time. And uh, it's one of those things that you have to deal with playing a r- uh, rough sport. Playoffs for the first time since 2010. That's got to make you happy. It is. Uh, you know, I'm proud of these kids. I'm proud of the coaches and, and everybody. And, I, you know, I feel like everybody got behind us. And uh, good things happen when those things happen. What are the possible matchups for the playoffs? Uh, we believe, looking at everything, it's probably going to be uh, Cooper or Alba Golden. Uh, a lot of things will be decided uh, from our game Friday night against Leonard. We're talking about Leonard tonight, uh, nine and one, coming off a double overtime win versus Tom Bean last week. Did you find anything out on film that you might could exploit? Uh, you know, they're a good football team and they're well coached, and, and uh, it's one of those things that uh, you know I think Tom Bean matched up with them well, and uh, you know, like it always is in high school football, sometimes it's about the matchups, and so uh, you know, we hope we can control their their run game, and uh, you know, of course, uh, get our run game going a little bit and uh, control that football. For the first time since you've been here, you've got a, a three-game winning streak. Do you think momentum like that can carry over to a big game like that tonight? Oh, it does. You know, it's just more confidence than it is anything. But, uh, again, you know, they're 7-1. Uh, so it's not that they don't have any momentum at all. But uh, it'll be a good football game, uh, deciding second and third. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of things on the line. Uh, playoff spots, uh, playoff brackets and everything. So everybody's looking at it, see which way we want to go. And, uh, you know, that's what it's all about when you get the week 10 and uh, makes it fun. This has been the Bulldogs Coaches Show featuring Hal, Athletic Director and Head Coach, Zach Hudson. For my family, life is a series of celebrations from my newest born cousin to my grandmother. We all partake in births, weddings and funerals wherever we celebrate we need to feel welcome that's why we choose Scoggins Funeral Home and how Scoggins Funeral Home understands our needs talk to the caring staff at Scoggins Funeral Home call 903-532-5577 or visit ScogginsFuneralHome.com GCEC Wireless located in Van Alstine off of exit 51 can help you with all your Verizon wireless needs They have a wide range of products and services, including smartphones, wireless home and mobile internet, wireless home phone service, and accessories. They're also your local DirecTV dealer. So come on by or call them at 903-712-2355. That's GCEC Wireless. And go Bulldogs! Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. Monty Walker along with Michael Mosier. You heard uh, Coach Hudson talk a little bit about the injuries that happened last week. And, uh, uh, man, were they monumental. Uh, it's the first time uh, Ricky Ake said that he's had two torn ACLs in the same game. Of course, Ricky Ake has been the trainer in Howe for 26 years now. And... When he says he sees something that he's not seen before, that really says a lot. And what a huge loss it is. Stratton Carroll out for the rest of the year. Still going to you know, get a second opinion on that and uh, get an MRI uh, from Dr. Cooper when he gets back from London with the, Ca- <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, also Joel Minivar, torn ACL. He will be out for the rest of the year. And... Uh, of course, Ty Portman will not play tonight. He's still got that hip flexor and and other things going on. So uh, lots of Bulldogs out tonight. It will not be the, uh, the full-strength Bulldogs, but uh, they have called some players up. Jaden Matthews will make his uh, debut tonight on varsity. He's 5'6", 145. He's a sophomore. He plays the slot back on JV, and he's done very well this year 
scored many touchdowns for the JV so far this season. And he will, along with Brandon Wall, play that slot back that uh, uh, Stratton Carroll has vacated with his torn ACL. You know, and, and unfortunately, you know, unfortunately for him, uh, well, those are some big shoes to fill. Oh, those are huge. You know, Stratton was... Stratton's a Stratton's a ball player, and that's that's a that's big uh, that's a big spot that's, that's going to hurt. What you lose in Stratton Carroll is 78 carries, 896 yards, and eight touchdowns. What that is is a first down every time he touches the ball. He averaged 11.5 yards per carry. That is a first down every carry and that's going to be tough to, to fill uh, Stratton's longest carry of the year was 66 yards he almost matched that last week on the very first play of the game when he went 62 yards for the touchdown last week ended up 7 carries 151 yards to lead the dogs and he had that one touchdown he's also had one reception for 10 yards this season but his year is over the 6 foot 180 pound junior will not play football again until until he is a senior. Yeah, it, uh, you know, I, it is. It's those things are hard. You know, uh, you know. Oh yeah. Knee injuries is it's, it's something that uh, you'll never be a hundred percent again. You know, it's something that's just going to nag at you every time the wind changes or it cools off just a little bit. But uh, I wish him the best. I, I can't wait to see what he comes with next year. Well, I reached out to Stratton Carroll because I went through the exact same thing my junior year toward the ACL. And I uh, wished him the best of luck and get a good doctor because you're going to need that. Right. Let's go over the uh, starting lineup for the Howl Bulldogs up on offense. The, uh, as they're dropping like flies, we have some new people in. Uh, Josh Griffin, six foot two twenty, and a senior. He's the left tackle. Charles Overby, 5'10", 185, senior, will play left guard. Tanner Hartsfield at center, 5'10", 180, and a sophomore. The right guard, Kiefer Rogers, six foot two twenty five, and a senior. And the freshman right tackle, Clay Marshall, 5'10", 235. The tight end, Matt Griffin, 6'4", 265, and a sophomore. The wide receiver, Caleb Ake, 6'1", 190, and a senior. Starting slot back tonight in place of Stratton Carroll is Brandon Wall. He's 5'9", 165. He's a sophomore. The quarterback, Joaquin Lopez. Lopez, 5'11", 180. He's a senior. The tailback tonight who brings his 1,248 yards and 17 touchdowns is 5'10", 175 senior Anthony Hawthorne. Let's hope that Mr. Hawthorne does not get injured. Coming back in the running back position, Tyler Grisham. He seems to be full strength now. 5'11", 200 pounds. Sophomore, 60 carries, 412 yards and two touchdowns on the season. Last week he had eight carries for 67. Hawthorne last week, 17 carries for 105. The Howe offense is undefeated this year when they rush for more than 206 yards. They are also undefeated when uh, they have two backs go over the 100-yard mark. So uh, very crucial for Howe to rush for more than 206 yards in the game and have uh, two, two ball carriers rush uh, for more than 100 yards. So... Uh, Michael, I will let you go over the starting defense for the Leonard Tigers. All right, going to be uh, safety Ryan Nixon, free safety Nathan Anderson, uh, right cornerback Rex Sure, uh, middle linebacker Mason Sargent, uh, weak side linebacker Garrett Wismer, left corner Colson Coley, linebacker Brent Hicks. Right end, Justin Baker. Right tackle, Dylan Pelton. Left tackle, Ian Malden. And left end, Tristan Faber. The uh, starting defense for the Howe Bulldogs will be at end, Jacob Taylor. Uh, the defensive tackle, Mike Helpenstell. The nose guard, Tristan Matthews. He is back and he will play tonight, 5'9", 215 and a junior. And also out on the end will be Cody Baker. 
Uh, 5'10", 230, and a junior. No Ty Portman tonight. Easton Ross, Quentin Harris will be the cornerbacks. And you will also see a lot of Nick Wilson out there. Wilson, 5'10", 160, and a junior. Easton Ross, 5'10", 160, and a senior. The linebackers tonight, Dalton Felder, who still has a broken hand, will wear a cast on that hand. But I think next week he'll get that cast off and wear just a little brace. He's 5'8", 170, and a junior. He plays linebacker along with Dylan Moreau, the freshman, 5'9", 190, and Andrew Griffin, 5'9", 180. He's also a freshman. The safety tonight, Levi Mrzinski, 6'1", 165, and a junior. And the strong safety, Anthony Hawthorne, 5'10", 175. He is a senior. Let's go over the starting uh, offense for the uh, Leonard Tigers. Uh, left tackle, Tristan Farber. Left guard, Dylan Pelton. Center, Akeem Titus. Right guard, Cason Riley. Right tackle, Juan Martinez. Wide receiver, Nathan Anderson. Slot back, Brex Schur. Quarterback, Ryan Nixon. Uh, fullback, Dylan Bonk. Uh, and wide receiver, Nick McLean. The Leonard Tigers lead the series overall 15 to 10 over the Howe Bulldogs. Howe has lost four in a row to Leonard going back to 2004. Howe has scored 435, Leonard 468 in the series. And Howe won seven in a row back from 1991 to 2003. Leonard won eight in a row from 1961 to 72. Uh, Howe's most points ever scored against Leonard is 33. That was back in 1973. Leonard's most points against Howe was 59. That's back in 2008. Howe is seven and five versus Leonard here at Bulldog Stadium. And won seven in a row here at Bulldog Stadium versus Leonard from 1973 to 2002. The overall record for the Howe Bulldogs, 360 wins, 331 losses, and 24 ties. Head coach Zach Hudson, he's from Rockwall, Texas. His wife is Carrie, former head uh, volleyball coach. They have two children, Kai and Bodie, both girls, seven and four. Coach Hudson went to Navarro College and then Texas A&M Commerce where he played ball at both. His record at Howe now is 8 and 11. He's the 25th head coach in Howe history. He's been at Garland Lakeview, Weimer, LaGrange, back to Weimer as the head coach and athletic director, and then here to Howe as the ha head coach and athletic director. One more win uh, for Zach Hudson, and he will tie Arthur Boyle. So with a win tonight, uh, he will move his record to nine wins uh, in Howe history, and that would tie Arthur Boyle, who coached in 58 and 59. We're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be back with more Howe Bulldog football in just a moment on HowEnterprise.com. Think back to the best fried pie you've ever had. It won't compare to Sweetie Pies in Van Alstine. They have handmade apricot, apple, peach, buttermilk, chocolate, coconut, and lemon fried pies that melt in your mouth. Located at 120 South Main Street in Van Alstine on the east side of downtown. Give them a call at 903-712-PIES. That's 903-712-7437. Sweetie Pies can also make custom Howe cookies, muffins, and other baked goods. It's way too hot for your vehicle's AC to go out. Head over to 4A Automotive and Howe for their special air conditioning service checkup for just $39.95. For over 10 years, they've provided the most reliable and dependable service and repairs in the area. 4A Automotive is a bumper-to-bumper -bumper service shop. They do it all, from autos to diesels, and they're front-end specialists, too. So call 4A Automotive today at 903-546-0024. They're located four miles east of Howe at the corner of FM 902 and Luella Road. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. Monty Walker along with Michael Mosier. And uh, Stephen Braswell will be joining us shortly up here in the booth. He's uh, doing the Bulldog Tunnel uh, chores down there and responsibilities as he always uh, helps out with that. And Again, we want to thank Loretta Anderson who several years back uh, put forth the effort and the money to, to buy that uh, big bulldog blow up run through that they come through every week the coaches are about to come in and tell you what it's going to be uh, fascinating to see leonard and uh the how bulldogs tonight leonard their overall opposition is 43 and 38 on the year they played uh three teams that are six and three they played three teams that are three and six they played gunner who is eight and one 
Tom Bean three and six, and now Howe five and four makes their opposition 43 and 38. In the district, Gunner on top, four and zero. Oh. Howe and Leonard are next, three and one. So the battle of second and third place is tonight. SNS Tom Bean at one and three, and White Wright 0 oh and four. The uh, Howe Bulldogs have really been a first-half team offensively, scoring 77 in the first quarter, 97 in the second, and then 41 and 36 to round it out. The opposition has scored 35 in the first quarter. Second quarter has been the nemesis for the Howe Bulldogs, giving up 75 points. The third quarter, 47, and the fourth quarter, 41 points. Howe has scored 251 and given up 198 points on the year. The defense averaging, uh, giving up 22 points a game. That's the best since 2010, which happens to be the last playoff game, ironically. So uh, uh, things are, are shaping out statistically and everywhere else that this is a, a very good football team, and, and uh, they are. They are. They're, they are. They are fun to watch. I mean, there's a lot of things that uh, uh, they're just they're great to watch. They uh, they put on a heck of a show. Uh, they try hard and they they never quit, and uh, that's what makes them the, the team that they have now. Uh, that much more they they click together. And, uh, it uh, it's fantastic to watch on Fridays. I I thir I have enjoyed it, uh, and I look forward to many more to to come. You know, I t jokingly said last week to Coach Hudson, said we uh, we're halfway through. We've uh, we've gone through eight games and we've got eight games to go. Yep. <laughs> that is, uh, I was telling the coach, uh, or not coach, I was telling the superintendent, uh, Mr. Wilson, about that, and he said, "Well, that's very optimistic of you." Right. <laughs> right. You know, and uh, you know, I, I don't know about you, but uh, while I was. Uh, <laughs> relaxing from uh, working hard today at the bazaar. Yeah, there you uh, go. I watched the news and uh, I sure hope we play on Friday, not Thursday, because it's supposed to be 42 degrees Thursday. Yeah, that I don't want any part of that. It's, <laughs> it it actually feels pretty good to me. Now my wife thinks this is like uh, the Arctic, uh, but I kind of enjoy this kind of weather. I'm in short sleeves walking around. I'm fine, but uh, after a while, it can get a little cold. And, yeah, it gets a little cold. Of course, we're up here in the nice, comfy booth, and uh, thought for a moment they were putting the heat on, which was going to burn me out of here. But it's actually pretty comfortable. They have some air on. It's not. It's not, you know, 98 degrees or anything. Right. I guess if it got too hot, we'd have had to move this this little venture outside. <laughs> the, it is senior night at Bulldog Stadium. They've gone through all the uh, uh, decorative celebrations for that. All the parents and seniors have uh, been introduced on the field. We will take another quick timeout, and pretty soon we're going to be have some. We're going to have some. Uh, this is basically a playoff game atmosphere, if you will. Both teams fighting for second and third. The winner uh, will um, catch your second place. So we'll take a quick timeout. We'll be back with more Howl Bulldog football and HowEnterprise.com. Calling all Bulldog fans to come down to the Sonic and Howl for half price shakes after 8 and open until midnight. Home games only, where you get great food and big smiles. And a little message for all our Howl football players. Go, Bulldogs fight, Bulldogs win, win, win. Because it's not just good, it's Sonic good. You're invited to the one and only Buck Snort Barbecue in downtown Van Alstine, Texas. Your friends and neighbors say it's the best barbecue in North Texas. Now it's your turn to decide. Come taste the difference at Buck Snort Barbecue. For complete store information, including menu, location, and hours, click on BucksnortBBQ.com. That's BucksnortBBQ.com. Buck Snort Barbecue in downtown Van Alstine is a proud supporter of the Howl Bulldogs. Here come the Howe Bulldogs. All black. Black pants. Black jerseys. Black helmets. Black face masks. Black socks. Thankfully, white numbers. Yes. Yes. Oh. For the first time in a couple of weeks, we don't have crazy numbers. 
to try to figure out. Across the way, Leonard has already made their way through. They have white pants, white jerseys, gold helmets, and here's our prayer. Dear Lord, I just ask you to uh, watch over everybody tonight as this game uh, gets underway. I ask you to uh, put your hand over everybody in the stands. Um, I ask you to watch over the coaches and both football teams, both fans, and uh, just make this a friendly game and uh, just just the outcome, whatever it is, uh, we'd be respectful about it. Just number pray, amen. All right, a beautiful moment here at Bulldog Stadium. The, like I said, the Leonard Tigers, white pants, white jerseys. Blue numbers. Now the Blue West. numbers, not white numbers outlined in something. <laughs> They're actually nice, easy to read numbers. Here's the national anthem. Booster Club invites you to become a supporter of the Howe Bulldogs. The type of kids we have, they're just hard workers and do anything you ask. And... Memberships are $25 and will be available at all home games. All proceeds benefit high school and middle school athletic programs. Please join the Howe Athletic Booster Club in our efforts to support our hometown kids. When people come here, you know, it's something they can be proud of. The Howe Enterprise has served Howe as the hometown news since 1963. Since then, the Bulldogs have won eight districts, seven by district, three area championships, and one regional title. We've seen 14 different head coaches during that time. The Howe Enterprise has been with the Bulldogs for 51 years. We were there when the pride of Howe won three band state championships. HowEnterprise.com publishes weekly on Mondays. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. Monty Walker along with Michael Mosier and Stephen Braswell. The Bulldogs have gone out and had the coin toss. Easton Ross joined them uh, since Stratton Carroll no longer there. Easton Ross has joined the, uh, the captains out there. The Bulldogs did win the toss. They elected to receive. They will be moving left to right towards the south end zone. So Leonard will be kicking off first. Leonard will send their... Uh, their big kicker out there, Nick McCain, to do the kicking duties. And we'll see who jumps back there with Stratton Carroll again out with a torn ACL. Joaquin Lopez will take his spot back deep along with Tyler Grisham. And, of course, in the middle, Anthony Hawthorne. And when he touches the ball, he can go at just about any time. He's already scored once on a 90-yard kickoff return this year against SNS. The Leonard Tigers, Nick McCain, will put the ball on the near hash, not in the middle of the field, but on the near hash. Everybody grouped together for Leonard. They will run to the ball and fake the quail onside and now spread out. As we are just now underway, almost as we're awaiting this kickoff. And there it is, McCain, a high pooch kick going to be taken by Joaquin Lopez. And he's at the 25, makes his way up the far side to about the 33-yard line. And that's where Howe will take over from their own 33, just underway with 11.54 on the clock. One 
Juan Martini has made the stop for the Tigers. What Howe is hoping for here is a 60, I'm sorry, yeah, 67 yard drive to start this football game. It's a big, huge district matchup. Leonard and Howe both fighting for second place. Already in the playoffs, it's first and ten. One guy moves across for Leonard, gets back in position, hand off Hawthorne right side. He's met after about a one-yard gain, and then he's killed, still keeps going somehow, and Bear crawls to the 40, and that'll be good for about a six-yard gain after he was initially hit immediately, and I thought he was right down. Dylan Pelton made the stop for the Tigers. So that'll be second down and four after a good jump there by Hawthorne to end that play. Again, Brandon Wall in the slot. And this will be a handoff Tyler Grisham around the left side. He's met with some resistance but does get forward for very close to the first down. He'll mark it at about the 44. He needed to get to the 44. I think he's going to be a few inches short. It'll be third. And are they going to move the sticks? Well, the official says that's good enough for a first down. They didn't even measure. I thought for a moment it was going to be a little bit short. but yeah, Mason Sargent and Dylan Pelton made the stop for the Tigers. Quentin Harris brings the play in on this first down effort. As, again, Jaden Matthews called up from the JV. We'll see time tonight in the slot. This is going to be a handoff Hawthorne up the middle. He's got some room. Look out. He's got the 40. It's a foot race to the 30, to the 25, 20. Kiss him goodbye. It is touchdown time in Texas. And Howe in this grudge match have the first lead of the night. 6-0 awaiting the PAT. Hawthorne just busted out from the middle to the left side of the field, and he was gone. You know, uh... Looks like there's a full moon. Maybe those Bulldogs like full moon. So at 10.33, left to go in the first. We're just underway, and Hal's already on the board. Here is the kick by Honaker. The PAT is up, and it's good. Hal leads 7-0. With 10.33 left to go in the first, back in a moment with more How Bulldog football on HowEnterprise.com. Carrie's Coffee Company in historic downtown Van Alstine, next to the post office, is the new upscale coffee shop serving Van Alstine, Howe, and surrounding areas. Carrie's Coffee Company offers a wide variety of organic coffee and non-coffee beverages and baked goods. Come visit Carrie's Coffee Company in downtown Van Alstine, next to the post office, and mention this ad and get 50% off your first beverage. Open Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 7 a.m. on Saturdays. Carrie's Coffee Company is Texas quality. Your business has a story to tell. Let Fast Signs help you tell it using the right mix of visual communication solutions like signs, banners, digital displays, vehicle graphics, mobile marketing, and so much more. Give Fast Signs your business challenge and we'll come up with a plan to grow your business, reach more customers, and accomplish more than you ever thought possible. Fast Signs. More than fast, more than signs. Fast Signs Texoma, located at 1916 North Grand Avenue in Sherman, 903-893 sign. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. Here's a pooch kick by Honaker and finally it'll be uh, grabbed down by one of the uh, front men for the Leonard Tigers. That was Brandon Navarro who finally fell on it. It was kind of an onside kick, just kind of pooched a little bit and Leonard will take over at their own 41 yard line. 10.33 on the clock. The first time Leonard's touched the ball and they're down seven to nothing to the Howe Bulldogs. Shotgun formation, this will be the quarterback running right side. He's got some room. Look out to the near side. That's Ryan Nixon and he'll have an easy first down as he starts out the other way, comes back to the near side, moving right to left. And he's got the 40 yard line in Howe territory. A nice first down run for Leonard to start this football game. So a first down situation for the Tigers. 
Trailing 7 to nothing. Nixon in the gun. He will hand off right side. No, Nixon's going to keep it again. And this time he's met right at the line of scrimmage. A nice play by Griffin there to come up and make sure he had nothing, no room to go. Dylan Monk is the tailback who will get a lot of the carries tonight for the Leonard Tigers. But Ryan Nixon is their go-to guy. He is their athlete on the team. And there's a reason he's playing quarterback, because he can move around. Yeah, he uh, watched him near warm-ups. He can throw the ball pretty good, too. Anderson split out wide up at the top. And this will be a handoff mock for the first time tonight. And he will gain about three yards inside the 40 to about the 37-yard line. And that will bring up a second down, or actually third down and seven for the Leonard Tigers. J.P. Queen made the stop for the Bulldogs. Dalton Felder, the outside linebacker. Levi Merzinski into the game. Quentin Harris and Easton Ross, the corners. Uh, Hawthorne and Brzezinski, the safeties. And McQueen at that outside backer position. Here is the handoff to Monk. No, nope, Nixon's going to keep it, and he is drugged down by Moreau. And also Levi Brzezinski, and also Queen was there. It'll bring up a fourth down for Leonard, about five yards to go. So an interesting decision here in how territory at the 35-yard line. Uh, Andrew Griffin in on that stop as well. You know, we've, we've mentioned, talked about Andrew quite a bit. Uh, he's uh, Andrew's a pretty good ball player. For a freshman, he's doing a fantastic job. Nick McCain is the punter, but he is nowhere to be seen on this fourth down and five. And now a timeout's been called. I believe a timeout. So, yep, Leonard calls a timeout. We'll take one, too. Back in a moment with more How Bulldog football on HowEnterprise.com. Hi, this is Chris Cavender. The holidays are around the corner. Call Cavender Home Theater to get that new TV or audio system delivered and set up by our professionals. We can deliver all that plus dish with one visit by our top-notch team of installers so you know it's done right. Competitive prices, local service you can depend on. Come see us at 6202 Texoma Parkway in Sherman, online at CavenderHT.com, or give us a call, 903-892-3499. Local service is always better. Go Bulldogs! Abby's Restaurant is family owned and run. They have the cure for all your home cooking cravings. Chicken fried steak, loaded baked potato, bacon patty melt, grilled chicken salad, cheese fries, jalapeno stuffed peppers, and more. Don't forget to save room for that cheesecake and cobbler with ice cream. We know you're going to love the food and the service. Abby's Restaurant in downtown Howe. They're open from 11 to 8, Monday through Saturday. Give them a call, 903-487-8860. Abby's Restaurant. The Bulldog. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium as Leonard picks up the first down. It was a handoff up the middle to Dylan Monk. And made, Dalton Felder made a stop. Monk got just enough for the first down. They needed five. He got exactly five. So it'll be first and ten for the Leonard Tigers moving right to left here at Bulldog Stadium towards that north end zone. Hand off. Monk. Again, that's not Monk. Yeah, it is Monk. And I believe he's got nearly ten again. At least nine yards. And it looks like uh, Anthony Hawthorne brought him down. And it will be a 10-yard gain inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. So Leonard all of a sudden trying to answer right back from Howe. Uh, the Howe's 56-yard touchdown by Anthony Hawthorne. First and 10. Man in motion. Nixon wants to keep it around the right side. He's got some room. Barrels his head and rolls over one defender. And he's just uh, chewing up some yards here. The Leonard Tigers are chewing up yards. And that's about an eight or nine yard gain. Yeah, Levi Mer Merzinski made the stop for the uh, Bolo. It'll be second down and two. As Anderson will come to the near side. Uh, Colson Coley will split out wide right. Nixon, handoff Monk up the middle. He's got enough for the first down, but he's brought down at about the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Leonard Tigers now. Dylan Moreau made the stop for the, for the Bulldog. A couple of uh, Tigers checking into the game. Looks like uh, Nick McCain will check in. He'll be Split out wide to the left. Yeah, we can't lose him with them yellow shoes on. Yeah, Anderson and Coley split out wide to the right. And a slot 
And now Coley will come in motion. He'll hand off to him. Coming. No, Nixon's going to keep it up the middle again. And now he, he uh, did he fumble it forward? That's got to be a lateral. He fumbled it forward. Now the flag comes out. Coach Hudson was running on the field saying, hey, he can't do that. He just basically he either was fumbled, either was hit and fumbled forward, or he pitched it forward. I can't tell. But either way, that's a lateral, and they can't score on that. Yeah, it looked like he might have tried to be maybe running the option, and uh, he was, his back was a little farther ahead of him than he thought. And if he thought he was behind the line of scrimmage, he was not, as this will be... Uh, lateral, and we'll check and see where they spot the ball. It'll be at the nine yard line. Nope, nope, that's where they're going to initially spot it and should move it back from here, I would think. Nope, they're going to spot it at the nine. Interesting. So, two receivers either side. And this will be a handoff to Monk. Right up the middle, he'll turn over to the right side, gain about four or five yards. It will be second down now, and goal from about the five, maybe the four. The initial contact by Andrew Griffin. They'll spot the ball in between the five and the six-yard line. 6.28 on the first quarter clock. Hal leads 7 to nothing, but Leonard knocking on the door right here in this District 5-3A grudge match. The winner secures second place. The loser ends up with third. Two receivers either side. Monk in the back. And here's a motion, motion man to the right side. Nixon's going to keep it over the right side. He is into the end zone. Touchdown, Leonard. Six-yard touchdown for quarterback Ryan Nixon. And Leonard puts six on the board trail, seven to six, with 6.09 in the first, you know, awaiting this PAT. You know, I think, uh, I think we're going to go back and forth like this all night long. It very well could be. At least it appears that way early on. And this will be Mr. Yellow Shoes himself, Nick McCain, left-footed kicker. It's on the tee. And Ryan Nixon, the holder. No, it's no good. Wide left. Yeah, we it is no good. We watched him warm up during the... We watched him warm up during, during pregame, and you know he was kicking them wide right. So that's kind of an unusual for him to go left. We'll be back in a moment with more How Bulldogs football on HowEnterprise.com. Bulldogs make the playoffs, and you get the payoff. Hi, this is Chris with Cavender Home Theater. Through November, we're going to give you a $100 Visa gift card just for signing up for Dish with Cavender Home Theater. That's on top of $400 in discounts and free installation. So get the hopper with the best DVR, more HD channels, commercial skip on recording primetime shows and lots of apps like Sports Finder and TV Anywhere. Upgrade your home and save money. Visit us at CavenderTV.com or call us at 903-892-3499. Local services always better. Go Bulldogs! Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium as Nick McCain will try to tee this one up. Uh, for Leonard, it was a 59-yard drive for the Tigers. It took four minutes and 20 seconds off the clock, and it was Ryan Nixon, the quarterback, who ran over the right side for the six-yard touchdown. The missed extra point. We'll see if that comes into play. Hal leads seven to six. Joaquin Lopez will take it at the 34-yard line, and he's got a save. Look out. 40, 35, 30. At the 20, tries to make a man miss, but he's brought down by the kicker, McCain, at the 15-yard line. A nice return by Joaquin Lopez. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not real sure what McCain was doing. He was just kind of standing over here on the uh, house side with his hands on his hips watching. They'll actually spot the ball at the 17-yard line in Leonard territory. So how in great shape right here to punch it in again. <laughs> yeah, like I say, uh, I think McCain thought they were maybe going to make the stop back here, and he wasn't going to have to do anything. First and 10, toss right side. That's Hawthorne looking for the edge. He's got the edge to the 10 to the 5. Kiss him goodbye. It is touchdown time in Texas. Hold everything. There's a flag down at the line of scrimmage right at the 17. Holding is the call against the Oh, you hear Roger Tidwell on the PA saying holding against Howe, so they will bring that one back. Hawthorne found that edge, and he was gone. Nobody even touched him, walked the dog touchdown. But 
there might be a reason no one touched him because there was a hold. They'll bring the ball back to the 26-yard line, and Howe will now have it first and about 20 with 5.51 left to go in the first. Same formation. And this will be a handoff this time, right side, right over right guard, and Hawthorne just takes the entire pile with him. Gain of about 10. Brent Hicks uh, made the stop for the Tigers. Ball rests at the 16-yard line. It'll be second down and 11 now for the Howe Bulldogs. Moving left to right towards the south end zone. 529 and rolling here in the first quarter. 7-6, to six, Howe in the lead. The missed extra point by Nick McCain could very well come in huge tonight. We'll see. This is Wall at quarterback. And no gain there for Anthony Hawthorne. What they're running right now is Joaquin Lopez at fullback and running Hawthorne right behind him. Kind of an eye formation, offset eye, because uh, Tyler Grisham is off to the right side. Yeah. So it looks like an eye, offset eye formation. First time we've seen that all year. Yeah, that's a new one. Uh, Dylan Pelton and Mason Sargent made the stop for the Tigers. Now here's the slot formation, and it looks like there's going to be movement by the Bulldogs. That was Matt Griffin. The tight end will jump off sides. The legal procedure will be. Now it'll be third, instead of third and 12, it'll be third and 17 for Howe. So setting up with great position at the 17-yard line by Joaquin Lopez return. Just haven't been able to capitalize on that with a holding call and uh, now an, an offsides penalty. And You just hate to see this. Yeah, they're going the wrong way. That's not the way we need to be going. Lopez under center. Hand off Hawthorne. Bounces out left side in trouble and caught behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be fourth down for Howe as Leonard, very excited, jumping all over the place are the defensive linemen as they stopped Hawthorne right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down and about 17. The ball rests at the 22-yard line, so it would be somewhere in the range of a 39-yard field goal if they were to try Honaker, but they are not going to do that. It'll be fourth and 17. Wall in the slot. Hand off Hawthorne coming near side. He wants to throw the football. Now he just throws it out of bounds. He had no one to throw it to. Great coverage by Leonard in the end zone. We're trying to hit uh, Caleb Ake in the end zone, but he had two men on him, and that'll be a turnover on downs for Howe. Mm. That's a just a yeah, wasted a heart, opportunity. There's a heartbreaker there. You just knew that Hal was in great shape to score there, but just shot themselves in the foot. So 3.39 on the clock for Leonard, and they will take over at the 22. Here's a run up the middle by Monk, and he will gain his normal customary eight yards on first down as the original line of scrimmage was the 22 is where Leonard started, and now it will be the 32. Barely short of the first down. Michael Kerr in on a stop for the Bulldog. Again, lots of new faces for Howe, lots of injuries. Nixon will hand off to Monk coming to the near side, and he fights forward and pushes and rolls, and he gets the first down, and that's not Monk on the carry. That's actually Brent Hicks who uh, will carry for the first down as the ball now rests at the 35-yard line. A new set of downs for Leonard with 2.59 left to go in the first quarter clock. It's been a pretty long first quarter, even though both teams running the football. There's no real reason why it's been slow, but kind of drug on a little bit. First and 10, man in motion. Nixon wants it, gets it, runs it up the middle, and he is hit by Felder, and also the shoestring tackle there by Helpenstell after a two-yard two gain to bring up second down and eight. 
Yeah, we're talking about the uh, bazaar today at First United Methodist Church. That was uh, quite the experience. Lots of people from all over the area. Oh, yeah, there, there were people from everywhere. I believe they said they had one lady come from Austin. Don't forget tomorrow, the Veterans Day uh, breakfast at the Church of Christ. Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Lots of veterans. Here is Nixon on the near side, wants to pitch it out. There's a fumble on the play. Hal may have it, and I believe they do. J.P. Queen comes up with the football on this side of midfield in Leonard territory at the 46-yard line. It was a... It was trying to be a pitch from Nixon to Monk, but he pitched it really late. He did, and, and Monk just kind of... It just kind of ricocheted off of his hands and, and off of his leg and went forward. It's almost too close to be pitching that football right there. Too late and too close. And Howe takes over at the 46-yard line. At, their own four, at the Leonard 46 with two minutes on the clock. Hawthorne running right side. And he'll be brought down by Monk at the 43-yard line. So two minutes on the first quarter clock. Hawthorne uh, gains three there. Yeah, and, you know, while we got a sec, uh, band boosters are having their craft show tomorrow, too. Starting at the high school at nine. This will be Lopez, hands off Tyler Grisham, running around the left side. He'll gain a couple out to the 40. So it'll be third down and about four now for Howe. Also on Sunday night, the uh, First Baptist Church having their men's cookout. G.A. Moore will be speaking Sunday night. That'll be at Howe High School. You won't want to miss that. Lots of activity in Howe, Texas. This Free weekend. food for all the men. You just have to be a, a guy. <laughs> third and four. Lopez, handoff, Grisham, left side, looking for some room, kind of tip, tippy-toeing his way through there. Will not get the first down. It'll be fourth down and a long one, maybe two yards here. Ian Malden made the stop for the Tigers. Ball rests at the 38-yard line. Howe has now started two possessions in Leonard territory. Did not do much on the first. We'll see what they can do here, facing a fourth down situation on both of these. And need to capitalize here, fourth and a long two. 25 seconds on the first quarter clock. Lopez under center, trying to draw Leonard off, and I believe they do. Hal points at Leonard, and Leonard kind of just moves backward as they know. That was a huge, huge, huge mistake by the Tigers. And that was a gutsy, great play call by the Hal Bulldogs. It was. That's uh, discipline at its finest that we try to teach our third and fourth graders over and over and over. And, uh, you know, it, it took them six weeks to get it. But, uh, boy, these varsity guys, you got to know it by that age, and they did. That's a great job of discipline. First and ten for Hal. Moving yeah, left I mean, to right. Some of those Leonard players are a little disgruntled with each other. The coach out on the field hollering. It's That'll be the end of the first quarter. As Howe leads 7-6, to six. Howe wins the first, 7-6. to six. Back in a moment with more Howe Bulldog football on HowEnterprise.com. For my family, life is a series of celebrations. From my newest born cousin to my grandmother. We all partake in births, weddings, and funerals. Wherever we celebrate, we need to feel welcome. That's why we choose Scoggins Funeral Home and Howe. Scoggins Funeral Home understands our needs. Talk to the caring staff at Scoggins Funeral Home. Call 903-532-5577 or visit ScogginsFuneralHome.com. GCEC Wireless, located in Van Alstine off of Exit 51, can help you with all your Verizon wireless needs. They have a wide range of products and services, including smartphones, wireless home and mobile internet, wireless home phone service, and accessories. They're also your local DirecTV dealer. So come on by or call them at 903-712-2355. That's GCEC Wireless. And go Bulldogs! Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. Hey, another thing, uh, one of our sponsors, Sweetie Pies in Van Austin. She's actually from Leonard. 
Oh, and yeah. she's a big time Leonard Tiger. And I asked her whether she was going to be here tonight. She said she's sponsoring the Hal Bulldogs. Which side would she sit on? And uh, I got I got the wrong answer. At least she's uh, sponsoring the Hal Bulldogs, but she's a Leonard Tiger. Karen, Sweetie Pies of Van Austin. This is a handoff, near side. Tyler Grisham, and he'll get two yards on first down. Now moving right to left towards the north end zone. It'll be second down and about eight, no, about, a, about seven, maybe even six. It's a better, better carry than what I thought. Now Karen from uh, Sweetie Pies informs me that the, uh, the fried pie of the month is pumpkin. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, I'm a... F I'm a fan of pumpkin. I'm gonna have to go try that out. I'm a fan of everything she cooks. I'm oh, gonna tell you that. I, yeah, she's got some good pie. I brought my wife a cookie and a, a rice krispie treat. She said it's the best she's ever had. Here's a handoff up the middle. Hawthorne. No, that's not Hawthorne. There's Lopez. And Lopez on the carry as they is Wall was the quarterback. Ryan Nixon made the stop. Third and five for Howe as you know, this is where you miss Stratton Carroll because uh, on that reverse. You know, when you average 11 yards a carry, you know, you, you make a lot of first downs. Yes, you do. You know, and, 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 yeah, it leaves a big hole. And that's what this play was going to be. However, it's false start against Howe. It was going to be Wall running that reverse to the far side, but the Bulldogs couldn't, couldn't capitalize on that play. As now, instead of being third and five, it'll be third and ten. Just a little bit past third and ten. In the second quarter now, 10-40 and rolling as Howe leads seven to six. Lopez to the line of scrimmage. He'll hand off to on the other side to Brandon Wall. He'll be caught from behind and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Fourth down and ten now for Howe as... He just really missed that burst from Carroll. So maybe a gain of two. It'll be fourth and eight, we'll call it. Mason Sargent and Ian Malden in on the stop for the Tigers. You know, Leonard, looking at it there, Leonard's got some pretty good old size. They got some pretty good sized boys. Yeah, they are uh, pretty big up front. Uh, defensive line. 220, 185, 275, 220, and 215. Here's a handoff. Wall again on the far side. He had a seam for a moment, not enough for the first down. Brandon Wall. And that will be a turnover on downs, and Leonard will take over right at the 25 yard line. Or 20, yeah, about 25 yard line in half territory. Ryan Nixon made the stop for the Tigers. You know, I think Howe's going to be really upset that they didn't capitalize on these uh, possessions inside Leonard territory. And the very first series, uh, Hawthorne was shot out of a cannon and scored from 56 yards out. Since then, not much has happened. And here's Nixon, wanting to run the option again to the left side. He finally does pitch it. And that will be Monk, who will gain about nine yards up to the 34-yard line. And when Leonard gains yardage, they gain lots of yardage at one time. But uh, they just haven't been able to sustain a drive. Howe's come up when they need to with a big play. And they're going to start needing some big plays again here because Leonard seems to be just moving the football at will lately. Yeah. Tristan Matthews, Levi Mrazinski, and Michael Kerr made the stop. Nixon, shotgun formation, wants to run it up the middle. He's got lots of room. First down and more, barrels his head and runs to the 44-yard line, just shy of the 45, and that'll be enough for a first down. 9.06 on the clock. Hal leads 7-6. to six. J.P. Queen made the stop for the Bulldogs. That looks like Austin Bearden going in for Mike Heppin still. And this will be Nixon throwing the swing pass out, and that will be caught. And there's a flag down. Uh, the catch was made by Colson Koale. He's brought down inside Howe territory after about an eight-yard gain. He was brought down, I uh, believe, by uh, Michael Carrer. But there is a flag in the very back of where the uh, quarterback was standing, Nixon, about where he was in shotgun formation. We'll see what this is. It looks like uh, initial contact was uh, rough in the pasture. 
Well, Coach Zach Hudson not happy about that call as he was uh, talking to the official. Our referee tonight, Michael Jackson, the umpire, Richard Jordan, the line judge, Tim Nobles, the head linesman, Mark uh, Lamshine, and the back judge, Ronnie Finley. That's a big penalty. It takes the ball all the way into Howe territory at the 31. That's a huge, huge, huge penalty. That's a backbreaker right there. You hope that uh, if you're a Bulldog fan, you hope Leonard can't capitalize on something like that because that, that's big. Low snap. It's dug out. Handoff by Monk brought down by Felder at the 30-yard line. A gain of maybe one. It might have got back to the line of scrimmage. I think, I think they'll call it no gain. So it'll be second down and 10. Felder playing a nice linebacker position just came up and wrapped him up. 8.15 on the clock here in the second quarter. Hal leading 7-6. Coley split out wide right, Anderson up top. Monk in the backfield, and he'll get the carry right up the middle, running left side. Jukes one defender on his way to a six-yard carry to the 24-yard line. Anthony Hawthorne and uh, Tanner, Hartsfield. Tanner Hartsfield in on the stop. Lots of rotations on defense for the Bulldogs, as sometimes you'll see Moreau. About half the time, you'll see Hartsfield. Yeah, it looks like Austin Bearden's in on the uh, defensive line. Third down and four. Third and three for Leonard. Moving left to right. This will be a handoff. That's Monk. And he's hit at the line of scrimmage. No gain there. It'll be fourth down. And that's what Howe's done so far this evening. They've given up big chunks, but when it comes down to the third down play, they've really done well. And Tristan Matthews uh, made the stop for Howe. So fourth down. This is a big play here for Leonard and Howe as it's fourth and four. 7.04 on the second quarter clock. Howe leading seven to six. Anderson will be split out wide to the right. McCain split out wide to the left. Nixon in the backfield with Monk. Shotgun formation, whistles blow before this can get underway. It'll be a timeout by Leonard. We'll take one too. Back in a moment with more How Bulldog football on HowEnterprise.com. Think back to the best fried pie you've ever had. It won't compare to Sweetie Pies in Van Alstine. They have handmade apricot, apple, peach, buttermilk, chocolate, coconut, and lemon fried pies that melt in your mouth. Located at 120 South Main Street in Van Alstine on the east side of downtown. Give them a call at 903-712-PIES. That's 903-712-7437. Sweetie Pies can also make custom Howe cookies, muffins, and other baked goods. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. Monty Walker along with Michael Mosier, Stephen Braswell. It's fourth down and four for the Leonard Tigers as they make their way back out on the field. Here come the Howe Bulldogs. We mentioned, that we failed to mention, but Tristan Matthews, Stump Matthews back in this week. That's good news for the Howe Bulldogs. Shotgun, low snap again, and a pitch is going to be out to Monk, who has the first down, and he slips away at the 15-yard line. Thought for a moment that he was going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage, and then he slipped away. Tristan so it, Matthews made the stop. A new set of downs for Leonard, and they are seriously knocking on the door here at about the 13-yard line. You know, and uh, Leonard's getting close to, uh, you know, he almost, that was almost a forward, a forward pitch again. Well, you can forward pitch it as long as you're behind the line of scrimmage. But when it gets uh, dangerous is when he runs up towards that line of scrimmage. Here's a man in motion. And this will be a handoff Monk running over left tackle. Slips one defender is hanging on by the shirt. Tanner Hartsfield uh, had him by the shirt. He wasn't going to go nowhere. It'll be a gain of about three on first down. It'll bring up second and seven. 6.08 on the clock before the half. How leading seven to six. But here's Leonard again as really they've uh, chewed up a lot of yards in this first half. Just don't have a lot to show for it. House made the stops when they needed them. Two receivers either side. Nixon, a bad snap and rolls to him and he's hit by Hartsfield in the backfield. He tried to pick it up. The ball was just rolling to him. And when he picked it up, Hartsfield was right there in his face. Third down and 11. Yeah, that's uh, 
That's twice in a row. And we talked about when things needed to happen. So far they have for Howe. Third and 11. We'll hope it continues here. Two receivers either side. Nixon wants to throw down the field and it is, wow, that's going to be caught by Anderson at about the two yard line. That was very, very close. Hartsfield, I believe it was Hartsfield who was right there. Both of them, I, I thought for a moment it could be intercepted. But uh, Anderson comes down with a great sliding catch. And Nixon just really fired it right he, in there. He threw, he threw it hard. It's one of them on a night like tonight where it burns when it hits. So a new, it'll be first and goal now for Leonard from the two-yard line. Two men in the backfield. Nixon, handoff, Monk, all kinds of room on the left side. Walk the dog. He's in for a touchdown. Two-yard touchdown for Dylan Monk. And Leonard takes the lead for the first time tonight. Yeah, that was a big hole there on the left side. Huge. So with 4.43 on the second quarter clock, Leonard goes up 12-7. to I would imagine they'd go for two here since they missed the PAT earlier. And looks like they will. I don't know. They're going to fake the kick. I'm not sure what exactly happened there, but it is a two-point conversion. It looks like uh, some kind of trickery. Brent Hicks scored the two-point conversion. It, McCain was lining up for the extra point. I, 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 that happened too fast. I missed it. It happened really <laughs> fast. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was watching him get ready to make the, uh, the kick. And now Leonard takes the lead 14 to 7 with 4.43 left to go in the second quarter. Back in a moment with more How Bulldog football on HowEnterprise.com. It's way too hot for your vehicle's AC to go out. Head over to 4A Automotive and Howe for their special air conditioning service checkup for just $39.95. For over 10 years, they've provided the most reliable and dependable service and repairs in the area. 4A Automotive is a bumper-to-bumper -bumper service shop. They do it all, from autos to diesels, and they're front-end specialists, too. So call 4A Automotive today at 903-546-0024. They're located four miles east of Howe at the corner of FM 902 and Luella Road. to come down to the Sonic and Hal for half-price shakes after 8 and open until midnight, home games only, where you get great food and big smiles. And a little message for all our Hal football players, go Bulldogs fight, Bulldogs win, win, win. Because it's not just good, it's Sonic good. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. Monty Walker along with Michael Mosier and Stephen Braswell. Here's McCain, and he will pooch kick it to the near side. It'll be taken by Joaquin Lopez at the 29-yard line, trying to come up the near side, and his horse collar down. They will not call a flag, but he was... Well, there is a late flag coming in from the, from the back judge. They will discuss it here. The, Lopez was brought down at the 40. And Hudson, Coach Hudson, is really upset about something that happened here at the 38-yard line. And now the official is upset as he's pumping his arms and saying something to the back judge. There's some uh, testosterone being uh, thrown about at Bulldog Stadium. And now Coach Hudson's really upset again. Both of them are talking to each other in a little loud voice. And now the official claps his hands and yells something back at Coach Hudson. And now, after all of that yelling at each other by Coach Hudson and the official, it's it's a face mask against Leonard. You know, and, uh, and you know that that official, you know, he's uh, you know him and Coach Hudson. Uh, and yeah, and, and now Shane Fletcher from the other side, Leonard's head coach, has some words with him. And we're talking about Richard Jordan, the umpire here. 
I'm not sure. I'd love, I'd love to know what exactly was was said there between those two guys because I'm afraid that their mothers wouldn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would too. And uh, if uh, if I was that umpire, you know, he's not just the biggest man in the world. No, he's he's you know, a, and he's having to look up. Yeah, Coach Hudson. Well, <laughs> well, most people do. Coach Hudson's a very big individual. First and ten. This will be Brandon Wall, the quarterback, right side Hawthorne, looking for that edge, and he finds the edge for about four yards. A long way to run for about four, but they will take it. It'll be second down and six for Howe. We are at the 426 mark Dylan. in the second quarter. Howe trailing 14-7 to seven to Leonard. Dylan Monk made the stop. You know, the only thing, though, is, is you don't want this between, you know, the coaches, the officials, you know, the kids see it. You don't want it to get out of control. You know, you don't want, you don't want the kids to maybe take, take an opportunity. Jaden Matthews checks into the game for the first time, and I bet you his eyes are pretty big here on second down and six. We'll see if he gets the carry. He goes in motion, handoff Hawthorne left side. He uh, lowers his shoulders and crosses the 40. It's going to be about a yard shy of the first down at the 39-yard line in Leonard territory. As this drive started at the 48-yard line, in Leonard territory. It's the third consecutive drive that Howe has started in Leonard territory. So far have come up with nothing and at some point you've got to take advantage of that field position. Yeah, they got to capitalize here. Hawthorne the one back. And this is going to be Lopez who fakes the pitch, turns around, spins around, and picks up the first down at the 37-yard line. A nice play there, a nice play call. You know, they uh, we run that play several times last year, and uh, you know it's just a little Joaquin just just spin and, and uh, uh, make that fake and spin and take off, and people just weren't ready for it. So how picks up the first down there? As Caleb Ake will bring in the play again, Jaden Matthews, the sophomore, 5'6", 145, scored a lot of touchdowns on JV, is into the game. And he will get the fake here. Lopez wants to throw the ball down the field. Wide open is Tyler Grisham. It is touchdown time in Texas. Touchdown. The first touchdown of the year, throwing the football from 38 yards out. Lopez hits Grisham. And Hal cuts the lead 14 to 13 with 249 left to go before half. Dylan Monk uh, was back there for the Tigers. He just, uh, Tyler got in behind him and uh, I guess they weren't expecting him. They were not expecting that. For the first time all year, Lopez connects for a touchdown, and that was a big one right there. Here's Honaker on for the PAT, and just like always, that one's up, and it is true. We've got a time ball game at Bulldog Stadium, 14-14. Back in a moment with more How Bulldogs football on HowEnterprise.com. Buck Snort Barbecue in downtown Van Alstine, Texas. Your friends and neighbors say it's the best barbecue in North Texas. Now it's your turn to decide. Come taste the difference at Buck Snort Barbecue. For complete store information, including menu, location, and hours, click on BucksnortBBQ.com. That's BucksnortBBQ.com. Buck Snort Barbecue in downtown Van Alstine is a proud supporter of the Howl Bulldogs. Athletic Booster Club invites you to become a supporter of the Howe Bulldogs. The type of kids we have are just hard workers and do anything you ask. And Memberships are $25 and will be available at all home games. All proceeds benefit high school and middle school athletic programs. Please join the Howe Athletic Booster Club in our efforts to support our hometown kids. When people come here, you know, it's something they can be proud of. Here's the onside kick by Honaker, and that will be taken by the up man Juan Martinez, 200 pound senior, falls on it, and Leonard will take over at the, their own 46 yard line to start this drive with 2.49 left to go before the half. Yeah, I don't think he was, uh, he wasn't expecting that. I do not believe so. 
First and ten for Leonard. They have moved the ball at will in this first half. Howe has made some good stands, though. Another low snap, and he finally gets the pitch off to Monk. And Monk will be brought down by Queen, but not after a nine-yard gain. Well, Dalton Felder was... Uh, Dalton Felder was in his face. He was thinking uh, he had to get rid of that ball in a hurry. Yeah, they're putting a lot of pressure there on uh, Ryan Nixon, the quarterback, as they're running that option at will now. And as long as he gets the pitch, uh, he's quickly they're able to make something of it. Second down and short. Wanting to throw. Nixon, right side. Down the field. And it'll be Levi Merzinski in coverage. And he will overthrow the intended receiver, Brex Schur. But great coverage there by Merzinski. That'll bring up third and short now with 2.14 left to go before the half. All tied up here in Hal, 14 to 14. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a good toss. And I would expect Nixon or Monk up the middle here because they've been successful all night long doing it. But they're going to throw the football, setting up the screen. Monk's caught it. He's got the first down and more. And churns his way to the 33-yard line. And now they'll spot him at the 31. So a nice gain there of about 15 yards. Levi Mrzinski, Andrew Griffin in on the stop. Helping still into the game. And Jacob Taylor will check out. You know, it's it's great to see how Howe's got the opportunity to do that. They've got kids that can do virtually, you know, anything. First and ten, here's Nixon, and he is popped by Hartsfield, but not after about a five-yard gain. Nixon was really thumped. Woo! Yeah, that was a good, that was a good hit. That's a... That's a snot flopper is what we used to call that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a good hit. Second down and six, 130 mark here in the second quarter. Howe and Leonard tied up at 14. Three receivers near side. And Nixon looks that way, wants to throw down the field. And it's very low and it's going to be incomplete. Trying to hit his very tiny receiver, Colson Coley. As Coley can't be more than 5'5". Five five. No, I don't even think he can go that tall. He, he reminds me so much of, uh, of Stephen Ogle back in the 1980s for Howe. And uh, if he were anywhere as fast as Stephen Ogle, he would be very, very dangerous. Yeah, he's... He's not a very big. He's not a very big young man. He's not very big at all. He wears the number one, and it's third and six. Low snap again. Nixon looks left side, wants to throw, and it's incomplete. In coverage was Nick Wilson, but right there for his receiver, McCain could have made the catch, but it was a low throw. McCain had to go down, try to catch it, but uh, could not come up with it. And now it's fourth down. And this is where Leonard is starting to have some success. Early on, Howe was uh, pretty much dominant on third and fourth down in this football game in the first quarter, but the second quarter has been a little bit different. Yeah, these, uh, these low snaps are, are hurting Leonard. Fourth and five. Nixon wants to throw right side, and it is incomplete. Howe holds and will get the football back at about the 27-yard line. 106 left to go before the half. I just am stunned why Leonard all of a sudden tried to throw the football there. They were running the ball at will, eight, nine yards a pop. And I think they just out thought themselves just a little bit there. Well, Nixon was slow getting up. And it uh, looks like he, uh, he went off the field and uh, Nick McCain uh, took his spot here on defense. First and 10 for Howe, everybody tight. And Lopez will hand off up the middle. And good for about six yards. I believe that's Hawthorne. I can't really tell, I think it is. And it is Hawthorne. And he'll gain about six, maybe seven. Under a minute now, and rolling. Howe has all their timeouts. Look like maybe Tristan Faber, Mason Sargent, uh, led that group for the Tigers. Hand off Grisham, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing there. Maybe a yard. It'll be third and three, and now Howe will call a timeout, I believe. Surely. 32 seconds on the clock before the half. Howe is not calling a timeout. 29 seconds. 
Uh, actually, we're at 21 and 20. Hat will not use any timeouts. And they're just going to let this one run out. They're content with going to the locker room tied 14 to 14. So that's the way we will go to the half. Tied 14 to 14. And we will be back with more Howe Bulldogs football and halftime entertainment in just a moment on HowEnterprise.com. The Howe Enterprise has served Howe as the hometown news since 1963. Since then, the Bulldogs have won eight districts, seven by district, three area championships, and one regional title. We've seen 14 different head coaches during that time. The Howe Enterprise has been with the Bulldogs for 51 years. We were there when the pride of Howe won three band state championships. HowEnterprise.com publishes weekly on Mondays. Carrie's Coffee Company in historic downtown Van Alstine, next to the post office, is the new upscale coffee shop serving Van Alstine, Howe, and surrounding areas. Carrie's Coffee Company offers a wide variety of organic coffee and non-coffee beverages and baked goods. Come visit Carrie's Coffee Company in downtown Van Alstine, next to the post office, and mention this ad and get 50% off your first beverage. Open Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 7 a.m. on Saturdays. Carrie's Coffee Company is Texas quality. Your business has a story to tell. Let Fast Signs help you tell it using the right mix of visual communication solutions like signs, banners, digital displays, vehicle graphics, mobile marketing, and so much more. Give Fast Signs your business challenge and we'll come up with a plan to grow your business, reach more customers, and accomplish more than you ever thought possible. Fast Signs. More than fast, more than signs. Fast Signs Texoma, located at 1916 North Grand Avenue in Sherman, 903-893 sign. Hi, this is Chris Cavender. The holidays are around the corner. Call Cavender Home Theater to get that new TV or audio system delivered and set up by our professionals. We can deliver all that plus dish with one visit by our top-notch team of installers so you know it's done right. Competitive prices, local service you can depend on. Come see us at 6202 Texoma Parkway in Sherman, online at CavenderHT.com, or give us a call, 903-892-3499. Local service is always better. Go Bulldogs! Abby's Restaurant is family owned and run. They have the cure for all your home cooking cravings. Chicken fried steak, loaded baked potato, bacon patty melt, grilled chicken salad, cheese fries, jalapeno stuffed peppers and more. Don't forget to save room for that cheesecake and cobbler with ice cream. We know you're going to love the food and the service. Abby's Restaurant in downtown Howe. They're open from 11 to 8, Monday through Saturday. Give them a call, 903-487-8860. Abby's Restaurant. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. Monty Walker along with Michael Mosier. Let's recap this uh, first half for you. Right now it's tied 14-14. to Howe and Leonard at Bulldog Stadium. The Howe Bulldogs won the toss they elected to receive. They took the ball at their own 33-yard line and capped off a 67-yard drive with a 56-yard touchdown by Anthony Hawthorne. That gave Howe an early 7-0 lead with 10.33 left to go in the first quarter. And that was early. I mean early lead. And then Lynn almost left. Not as early as last week, but still pretty early. Uh, let's see. Leonard took the ball next at their own 41-yard line with 10.33 on the clock. And they scrambled down for, um, that would be math, uh, 59 yards. It was a six-yard touchdown by quarterback Ryan Nixon. And we thought for a moment that missed PAT by McCain would come in costly for the Leonard Tigers. That left the score 7 to 6 with 6.09 left to go in the first quarter. Uh, Howe got the ball back, and Joaquin Lopez took it all the way to the 17 yard line in Leonard territory, uh, but nothing happened there. They stalled out and turned over on downs with 3.39 left to go in the first quarter. That gave Leonard the ball at their own 22, and they fumbled when Nixon tried to pitch it out to uh, his, his uh, running back there, Dylan Monk, and it was recovered by J.P. Queen. Now took the ball right there at the 46-yard line with two minutes to go right before the uh, first quarter ended. 
and they turned the ball over on downs, which gave Leonard the ball in the second quarter with 9.49 to go. And Dylan Monk scored for the first time tonight, two-yard touchdown. And this time, Brent Hicks scored on a crazy two-point conversion that I think was a quick snap, and that tied the game at 14-14. With 4.43 left to go before the half. Howe got the ball at their own 48-yard line. I take that back at the Leonard 48-yard line with 4.36 left to go before the half. And the result was a 38-yard touchdown by uh, Tyler Grisham from Joaquin Lopez, his first uh, passing touchdown of the year. That tied the game. Actually, that was the tying score, 14 to 14. The moment ago was the Leonard go-ahead score, 14 to seven. So that tied the game with the PAT, 14 to 14, with 2:49 left to go before the half. Leonard took it at their own 48-yard line with 2:49 left to go before the half. Turned it over on downs to Howe at their own 27-yard line, and that's where Howe killed the clock. Uh, the last one minute and six seconds, basically just took it to the house and said, we're okay with a 14 to 14 tie. And that's where we are right now. Right now, the Leonard Band is performing and we will let you listen to them. We'll be back with more How Bulldog Football on HowEnterprise.com.
2014-2015 Mount High School Varsity Cheerleaders. Whitney Kirby, Captain. and you get the payoff. Hi, this is Chris with Cavender Home Theater. Through November, we're going to give you a $100 Visa gift card just for signing up for Dish with Cavender Home Theater. That's on top of $400 in discounts and free installation. So get the hopper with the best DVR, more HD channels, commercial skip on recorded primetime shows, and lots of apps like Sports Finder and TV Anywhere. Upgrade your home and save money. Visit us at CavenderTV.com or call us at 903-892-3499. Local service is always better. Go Bulldogs! For my family, life is a series of celebrations. From my newest born cousin to my grandmother. We all partake in births, weddings, and funerals. Wherever we celebrate, we need to feel welcome. That's why we choose Scoggins Funeral Home and how. Scoggins Funeral Home understands our needs. Talk to the caring staff at Scoggins Funeral Home. Call 903-532-5577 or visit ScogginsFuneralHome.com. GCEC Wireless, located in Van Alstine off of Exit 51, can help you with all your Verizon wireless needs. They have a wide range of products and services, including smartphones, wireless home and mobile internet, wireless home phone service, and accessories. They're also your local direct TV dealer. So come on by or call them at 903-712-2355. That's GCEC Wireless. And go Bulldogs! Think back to the best fried pie you've ever had. It won't compare to Sweetie Pies in Van Alstine. They have handmade apricot, apple, peach, buttermilk, chocolate, coconut, and lemon fried pies that melt in your mouth. Located at 120 South Main Street in Van Alstine on the east side of downtown. Give them a call at 903-712-PIES. That's 903-712-7437. Sweetie Pies can also make custom Howe cookies, muffins, and other baked goods. It's way too hot for your vehicle's A.C. to go out. Head over to 4A Automotive and Howe for their special air conditioning service checkup for just $39.95. For over 10 years, they've provided the most reliable and dependable service and repairs in the area. 4A Automotive is a bumper-to-bumper -bumper service shop. They do it all, from autos to diesels, and they're front-end specialists, too. So call 4A Automotive today at 903-546-0024. They're located four miles east of Howe at the corner of FM 902 and Luella Road. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. Monty Walker along with Michael Mosier. We're here at half where we're tied 14 to 14. Leonard and Howe. The scores on the night. Howe scored early a 56-yard touchdown by Anthony Hawthorne to give Howe an early 7-0 lead. 
And then uh, Leonard answered right back with a six-yard touchdown by Ryan Nixon, their quarterback, on a six-yard variety. They missed the PAT. Um, later on, it was Dylan uh, Monk who scored from two yards out to uh, to give Leonard their first lead of the night. And that was 14-7 to after they made the two-point conversion. And then moments later, uh, Joaquin Lopez hit Tyler Grisham from 38 yards out to uh, tie the ball game, 14 to 14, with 2.49 left to go before the half, and that's where we are tonight. The Howe Band is coming on the field. We will let you listen to them as uh, the award-winning, tremendous Howe Bulldog. The pride of Howe, isn't that right? Pride Michael? of Howe, that's what they call them. The pride of Howe marching band, and we'll let you listen to them right now.
Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. Monty Walker along with Roger Tidwell. Welcome to the broadcast booth. Thank you, Monty. Let me make sure that is on there. There we go. Let's uh, talk about a special event that is going to be taking place uh, Sunday, Sunday evening at the high school. Talk about that. Yeah, we're very excited. We have Sunday evening at the high school starting at 5 o'clock. We have Coach G.A. Moore coming, speaking to our men. Who? G.A. Moore, coach from Salina. Oh, yeah, Winning that guy. Winning his coach in Texas, I understand. Except for here at Bulldog Stadium, I think, back in 90. Well, we won't talk about that. <laughs> he has had some good years, Monty. Yeah, he has. Outstanding coach. I uh, believe he's the all-time winningest coach in, in, Texas. in Texas football history. What I understand. Yes, sir. I guess you have to do something well in order to have Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what do you what do you expect from this evening? Uh, dinner? Yeah, we're having a hot dog cookout. Uh, hopefully two or three, maybe 400 men going to show up. Wow. We have some door prizes, some giveaways. Uh, coach Moore is going to speak. He's going to... Uh, inspire us to be uh, men, uh, men of God, men and stand up for our, our communities and our families. Uh, we're hoping all the seventh grade boys and and above can come and be part of this. Uh, looking for a good time. Now it's, uh, you mentioned seventh grade and up. Yes, sir. And only men, correct? Only men. Okay. So um, hot dogs, mm -hmm. great speaker. Great speaker. How long do you think it'll last? Uh, we're giving it an uh, hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that'll be. Yeah. That's exciting. It's there's lots of things going on this weekend with 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 the churches in town. The uh, Methodist Church having their bazaar today. The Church of Christ having their Veterans Day breakfast uh -huh. in the mornings. Yes. And of course, the First Baptist Church having the uh, the uh, cookout and G. A. Moore, and that's going to be fun. It's a busy time for churches. It's a it's a great time to be in How Texas. Absolutely, it? good place. Well, let's talk about this game a little bit. I know you do the PA, and you've been doing the PA for quite a while, even when Leon was here, you, uh -huh. were, you were doing it. What do you think about this uh, football team? I love this football team. They have heart. They have uh, class about them. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing what we can do in the playoffs. Will you be making it to the playoff Absolutely. game? Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Now, now, how does that work? Do, you, do they contract each team to do PA? Or do, will you... It will be the home stadium. Okay. Home announcer. So if uh, if how's the home team, then you would be doing PA. No, no, the the, oh, the host, I see. host stadium. I I'm see. Sorry. I see. Yes. Okay. Okay. I know in years past, of course that was twenty some odd years ago. I think we had the home broadcasters actually travel to those games. I think years ago. Oh, that would be neat. Yeah, that would be really. Yeah, neat. it'd be quite an honor. So uh, yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be fun. To, I hear the uh, it could be Rock Wall or it could be Paris from what I understand. Okay. So um, I knew we were going east. Yes. And mm -hmm. depending on that score, I don't know if Michael Mosier has a score on Cooper and, and uh, see what they've got, but he's working on it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been great. Thank you for joining oh. us, and, and I hope we have lots of people turn out for the uh, men's cookout. Unfortunately, uh, our third and fourth graders are playing down in Arlington at AT&T Stadium, so... Uh, I won't get to make it, but I would love for somehow it be recorded because uh, I'd love to, to talk about it in the Howe Enterprise yeah. the following day and see if I can get some pictures. Or just I'd love to promote it because oh, yeah. I know it's a good event. It is a good event. Congratulations to the third and fourth. <laughs> yeah. It's a big event for them as <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, I'll tell you. Well, thanks a lot for okay. joining us. We'll take a quick timeout, and we'll be back in a moment with more Howe Bulldog football on HowEnterprise.com. to come down to the Sonic and Howl for half-price shakes after 8 and open until midnight, home games only, where you get great food and big smiles. And a little message for all our Howl football players, go Bulldogs fight, Bulldogs win, win, win. Because it's not just good, it's Sonic good. You're invited to the one and only Buck Snort Barbecue in downtown Van Alstine, Texas. Your friends and neighbors say it's the best barbecue in North Texas. Now it's your turn to decide. Come taste the difference at Buck Snort Barbecue. For complete store information, including menu, location, and hours, click on BucksnortBBQ.com. That's BucksnortBBQ.com. Buck Snort Barbecue in downtown Van Alstine is a proud supporter of the Howl Bulldogs. 
Athletic Booster Club invites you to become a supporter of the Howl Bulldogs. And the type of kids we have, they're just hard workers and doing anything you ask. And... Memberships are $25 and will be available at all home games. All proceeds benefit high school and middle school athletic programs. Please join the Howe Athletic Booster Club in our efforts to support our hometown kids. When people come here, you know, it's something they can be proud of. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. Monty Walker along with Michael Mosier. As the Bulldogs have come back out on the field, they will be kicking the ball off since they won the toss in the early stages of this football game. And uh, Howe was able to capitalize on that and actually scored first in this, uh, in this game by going uh, 56 yards on Hawthorne's uh, touchdown. As I'm looking for my sheet, and I don't know what happened to my sheet that had all of my information. There it is. The wind blew it in the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mosier. As the Bulldogs, like I say, will be kicking off here, and Bryce Honecker will be teeing it up at the 40-yard line. Back deep to receive for Leonard will be Ryan Nixon, the quarterback. Dylan Moss, the uh, running back. And Mason Bois. Bois, B-U-A, Bois. Bois is an onside kick. And Hal says they have the football at the 45-yard line. The officials indicate yes, Hal has the football to open the second half. And they will take possession here in Leonard territory for the fourth time in this football game. Yeah, that was a good that was a good call right there. Well, that's how to take possession of this football game in the second half early on. Kick the onside kick, get it back, and that's exactly what Hal has done here. First and ten, moving left to right towards the south end zone. Ball rest with the nose touching the 45-yard line, and the rest of it towards the 46. The wind has picked up mightily here in the second half at Bulldog Stadium as the flag now flows towards the north as the south wind has blown in. But it is not a warm south wind. It is a very chilly south wind here at Bulldog Stadium. As the officials are taking their time here, the Bulldogs have been in the huddle now for about a minute. We're waiting on something. The, the line judge is talking to uh, Zach Hudson, and one of the officials is talking to uh, uh, head coach for Leonard, uh, Shane Fletcher. And still waiting. And now the the umpire, Richard Jordan, finally gets through talking to Shane Fletcher. And now he comes over. He's going to talk to the back judge. They're all going to huddle there at midfield. As wow, this has been an uh, interesting evening for Richard Jordan, the umpire, as now he'll go back over to Shane Fletcher and say something else to him. All right, Monty, I got this up on his phone. Cooper is on top of Chisholm, 22-14. Alvoid and Bells, 19-12. And Lone Oak and Alba Golden, 21-14. Who's up in Alba Golden? Lone Oak. Lone Oak, yes, I would imagine so. They're leading the district over there. And now how the officials have officially said it's how football, as they already had before, but Leonard has now stopped griping about it. First and 10, left to right. Lopez under center. Jaden Matthews goes in motion, and Hawthorne will get the carry on first down, and he'll fight his way forward for six yards inside, inside the 40 to the 39-yard line, and we're now just underway here in the second quarter. Dylan Monk made the stop for... Third quarter, rather. Sorry. Dylan Monk made the stop for the Tigers. So Howe with the ball in Leonard territory again. Second down and four. Grisham in motion. He'll get the toss. Running far side. Looking for a block from Hawthorne. Gets it. He's got a first down and more. He could be gone. Flag down. Uh, for the moment, Grisham scores from 38 yards out. But there's a flag. It's going to be holding against Howe. And Coach Dale West is screaming at the umpire, Richard Jordan. Very upset, and that will be that will that holding call will negate a 38-yard touchdown on a toss left side to Tyler Grisham. 
Oh, that's got to be painful. Holding against Tao, and that'll back him up near midfield to the 47-yard line. Devastating penalties against Tao in this football game. That's one of them. That is a devastating penalty. You think... Uh, did you you think Richard Jordan is going to want to come back after uh, all these chewings he's taking tonight? I don't know if he's going to come back to Howe very often or not. And in motion, Hawthorne gets the ball coming near side, looking for a block from Grisham. Gets the block, carrying two defenders, close to a first down at the 29-yard line, actually the 34-yard line. And it will be a first down, a great carry there by Hawthorne. And that gets Howe out of trouble with a fresh set of downs at the 34-yard line. Dylan Monk made the stop. 10.58 as we're now in the third quarter. All tied up, 14-14. Howe gets to the line of scrimmage. Lopez, handoff, right side, and not much doing there. Slung backwards is going to be Jaden Matthews on his first varsity carry. It's going to be a loss of about three. Tristan Faber uh, made the stop for the Tigers. They'll actually give progress, so only loss of two. They'll spot the ball at the 36-yard line, and Howe needs 12 yards now to get a first down. 10-10 on the clock and rolling. Handoff is going to be, I believe, up the middle. That's going to be Hawthorne. Mason Sargent made the stop for the Tigers. A gain of about four yards. will spot the ball inside the 35 at the 33-yard line. Now it'll be third and eight, third and nine. And anytime you have Hawthorne, it's manageable. But again, this is where you really miss Stratton Carroll on third and long situations on that reverse. Yeah, you missing him for sure. Hawthorne goes in the slot in motion. He'll get the hand coming to the far side. Looking for a block from Grisham. Gets a great block from Grisham. And he's going to be close to a first down. I believe he has it. Grisham got the block on Brent Hicks that sprung him forward. And Howe now has a first down at the 23-yard line. Cason Riley uh, in on that as well for Leonard. Hartsfield makes his way to the line of scrimmage. Everybody else follows him. Lopez under center. Trying to draw Leonard off sides. They do not move. Hawthorne gets the carry up the middle. Turns his way to the 12-yard line. Close to another first down. And at this point, it looks as if Hawthorne may be wearing out that defensive line a little bit. Another first down. Garrett Wismer and uh, Brent Hicks in on the stop. And the Howe offense all of a sudden is rolling. The wind picks up and so do the Bulldogs. 14-14, 8-34 rolling here in the, first, in the third quarter. <laughs> You're taking us back to the first. I am. Lopez, handoff, Hawthorne, right side. He is carrying the Bulldogs on his back, and he carries them to the two-yard line. That could be very well close to another first down, which could give Howe a first and goal at the two. Eric Wismer in on the stop. I'm not sure where they're going to spot this and mark it as far as the chains are concerned. And now they do put the chains down. It's first and goal from the two-yard line. Let's walk that dog right here. You know, we talked about this being back and forth. This, this. Lopez, handoff. Hawthorne up the middle. Did not get in. He's at the one. It'll be second down and goal. How trying to take the lead for the first time since their first score tonight in the very first part of the first quarter. The officials will spot the ball just outside of the goal line. 
We'll see what Dale West intends to call here on this second down and goal situation from just outside the goal line. Mason Sargent made the stop for the Tigers. Tigers were trying to sell fumble, but uh, it didn't go their way. Lopez, handoff, Hawthorne right side. He is down just outside of the goal line again. They'll say his knee hit before he went in. As Hal really having to fight for everything here. We're at the 6.58 mark in the third quarter. Tied 14-14. Hal with a third and goal from the one-inch line. Hartsfield. Breaks the huddle, comes to the line of scrimmage. Lopez follows him. Everybody's set. Lopez, handoff. Left side, Hawthorne, he's in. It's touchdown time in Texas. Hal takes the lead with 6.33 left to go in the third quarter. 20 to 14 awaiting the PAT. You know, this is gonna be a hard fought battle back and forth. Uh, you know, we said that from the get go. It is going to be that for sure. This is uh, this is a classic at Bulldog Stadium. Honaker trying to nail down the PAT here. Ross gets it. It's on the tee. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 21-14. Now in the lead with 6.33 left to go in the third. Put your seat belts on. It's going to be a nice bumpy ride here in the second half back in a moment with more How Bulldog football on HowEnterprise.com. The How Enterprise has served How as the hometown news since 1963. Since then, the Bulldogs have won eight districts, seven by district, three area championships, and one regional title. We've seen 14 different head coaches during that time. The How Enterprise has been with the Bulldogs for 51 years. We were there when the pride of How won three band state championships. HowEnterprise.com publishes weekly on Mondays. Carrie's Coffee Company in historic downtown Van Alstine, next to the post office, is the new upscale coffee shop serving Van Alstine, Howe, and surrounding areas. Carrie's Coffee Company offers a wide variety of organic coffee and non-coffee beverages and baked goods. Come visit Carrie's Coffee Company in downtown Van Alstine, next to the post office, and mention this ad and get 50% off your first beverage. Open Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 7 a.m. on Saturdays. Carrie's Coffee Company is Texas quality. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. We'll see if uh, Honaker and company try the onside again. You don't ever see it back to back, but we'll see here. You never know in a game like this. 6.33 left to go in the first. It is an onside kick. It's going to bounce. It could be House Bob. Monk had it for a moment and then finally squeezed it back in. Queen was right there in case it slipped out from him, but that, another great onside kick by Honaker. And How nearly came up with it again, but Leonard will take over at their own 41 yard line moving left to moving rather right to left towards the north end zone. 6.33 on the third quarter clock and here comes Ryan Nixon and Dylan Monk and a flag down before this one can get underway. Nixon was going to keep it around the left side but we'll check the flag and see what that is. That's going to be against Leonard. They'll back it up as you hear Roger Tidwell say offsides against the Tigers. Illegal procedure that'll be uh, marked off five yards. Back to the 36 yard line. It'll be first and 15 now. All the cheerleaders in this cold, crisp night wearing their letter jackets, the familiar gray with the black sleeves. And there's a lot of them tonight. There are a lot of them. First and 15. Nixon, low snap. Fakes the hand, wants to sling it down the field, and it's caught after about a six-yard gain. I believe that's Anderson who makes the catch. That is not Anderson. That is Mason Sargent who makes the catch. And the ball will now rest at the 43-yard line. It'll be second down and eight as they pick up seven yards on that sling as really it looked like a Brett Favre sling out there from Ryan Nixon. Three receivers near side. McCain at the bottom. 
And this will be Nixon wanting to run the option. He pitches it out. And right there, the Bulldogs sniff it out. A nice play there by Queen, who comes up to make the play on Monk, who gets the pitch. Yeah, Queen's done a good job tonight. He's uh, he has really worked hard tonight. What I'm impressed with so much about this Bulldog team is that you look across the board and you've got Queen, who's a sophomore, Hartsfield is a sophomore, Moreau is a freshman, Andrew Griffin is a freshman, uh, Mike Helpenstell is a sophomore. All these guys getting massive playing time on defense, third and six. Ryan Nixon rolling out right side, looking to throw down the field, and it is a caught, I believe, or a first down at the 44-yard line. And that will be uh, Colson Coley on the catch. 150 pounds, Stephen Ogle looking like receiver. He's only about 5'5". It'll be first and 10 for Leonard moving right to left at the Howe 44 yard line. Two receivers either side. Low snap again and Monk will get the hand running to the middle. He'll make his way to the 40 after a four yard gain. You know, they were and somebody's down again. There's an injured player. I believe that is an injured Tiger down. And, and, then there's, a, and there's a Bulldog. There's injured. two injured players. Ricky Ake is out to check on the uh, Hal Bulldog as Coach Zach Hudson also walks out on the field. The Leonard Tiger has at least gotten up on his feet. And that is uh, Dylan Monk who is injured. And he will limp off the field. That would be a huge loss for Leonard if Monk can no longer play. Coming into the game for Leonard will be Brent Hicks. And we're still checking to see who's down for the Howe Bulldogs. And they're checking on the left knee or left ankle. Uh, Ricky Ake is. Of course, we talked to Ricky Ake before the game. He's never seen two blown ACLs in one game until last week when uh, Joel Menavar and Stratton Carroll both went down with torn ACLs each yeah. in their right knee. Yeah, those were uh, those two were pretty close to uh, they were pretty close together series wise plays, you know, play wise. This looks like a left knee and it's going to be helping still and he will get up and kind of limp off the field. He's 5'10", 225 sophomore and he's very important on this defensive front right now. Is, you know, how's defensive tackles are dropping like flies. Yes, they are. Austin Bearden into the game, along with Tristan Matthews. And we'll have to check on the near side to see who is in. And that will be Jacob Taylor. And Queen playing the defensive end on the far side, where Portman usually plays. Handoff to the left side, and Tanner Hartsfield's gonna hit the back immediately. Brent Hicks got the carry in place of Monk. But it'll be false start by Leonard before this could get underway. So instead of second down and six, it'll be third and 11 for the Leonard Tigers. We'll have to keep eye on the far sideline over there and see uh, how Dylan Monk is doing, if they're still tending to him or not, or if he's gonna come back in the game. But in the meantime, it looks like Brent Hicks is going to take over his spot in the backfield. Nixon gets the, he's actually going to roll out right side, throw the screen pass, and it is caught, but dropped immediately in a flag down after about a one yard gain. We'll check the flag. This usually is not good coming in late like this, for how anyway. Tanner Hartsfield, Levi Marinsky in on the stop. If that's a face mask, that's a huge penalty against Howe. It would be a personal foul. Face mask against Howe. And that will be a first down for Leonard. As Howe really had all the momentum to this point. Backing Leonard up. And now Leonard has got a fresh set of downs deep inside Howe territory at the 27-yard line. Yeah, I don't... Uh... Just looking out across there, I don't see Monk on the sideline. Well, he's, uh, he's back in the game is what uh, Stephen Braswell just says. Oh, he's still limping. There, there he is, I see. Still limping a little bit. Oh, and uh, that's not him limping. That was Brent Hicks that was limping. Here's Moreau, or Monk who gets the carry right up the middle, and he does what he does and gains about seven yards. 
Second down. Well, they'll actually only give him five. Second down and five. Hartsfield checks out of the game. Dylan Moreau checks in. Hawthorne and Mrzinski are the safeties. Harrison Ross, the cornerbacks. You know, it's... Uh they had gone Ross's direction much passing-wise. Nixon rolls out that way, wants to throw that way. Now he's in trouble, escapes. He's going to scramble and runs right up the middle. He has the first down to the 15-yard line. So now Leonard is on the move. The face mask really hampered the Bulldogs. It gave Leonard life. And Quentin Harris made the stop for the Bulldogs. So first and 10 from the 15. Leonard moving right to left towards the north end zone here at Bulldog Stadium. Howe leading 21 to 14. 2.43 left to go in the third quarter. Nixon, low snap, digs it out. Gives it to Monk up the middle and he will barrel his way through about seven yards to the eight. They'll mark him at the seven yard line. So give him eight yards. No, I, uh... Levi Mrzinski made the stop. You know, if I was uh, uh, Nixon, I think I'd have a talk with my center. I'd get, I'd get tired of picking it off my ankles. Either that or just expect it way down low. Just put your hands down there and yeah. expect a low snap every oh, time. It, it has been bad here this second half, especially. And another low snap, but Nixon this time rolls out right side and wants to throw and just kind of throws it away because he had Queen right in his face. And now it is uh, the quarterback, Nixon, gets up wanting a penalty, a late hit, and does not get it. He gets up angrily with his palms up to the sky as if to say, hey, I was hit late. Queen just walks off, and it's third down. Third and about three, a long three for Leonard here. This is where the Bulldogs need a big stand. They're going to need a two-down stand. Handoff, Monk up the middle. He's got the first down inside the five to about the two. It'll be first and goal. Leonard going to try to tie the football game here in just a moment. 151 left to go in the third quarter. You know, we keep this up. We might be playing in overtime. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Leonard and Tom Bean double overtime last week. Anderson will be up top, and it will be Coley at the bottom, split out wide. Two men in the backfield. And Nixon's going to keep it right side, squirts in for the touchdown. The PAT will tie it at 21. 120 left to go in the third quarter, and we are a PAT away from being tied up here at Bulldog Stadium. A fight for second place. That is Ryan Nixon's second touchdown of the night. And we will await Mr. McCain, Nick McCain's left-footed PAT here as Nixon will hold. Snaps good, the kick is up, looks good. And it is, and we're all knotted up at 21 with 120 left to go in the third quarter. We'll be back with more Howe Bulldog football in just a moment on HowEnterprise.com. Your business has a story to tell. Let Fast Signs help you tell it using the right mix of visual communication solutions like signs, banners, digital displays, vehicle graphics, mobile marketing, and so much more. Give Fast Signs your business challenge, and we'll come up with a plan to grow your business, reach more customers, and accomplish more than you ever thought possible. Fast Signs. More than fast, more than signs. Fast Signs Texoma, located at 1916 North Grand Avenue in Sherman, 903 893 sign. 
this is Chris Cavender. The holidays are around the corner. Call Cavender Home Theater to get that new TV or audio system delivered and set up by our professionals. We can deliver all that plus dish with one visit by our top-notch team of installers so you know it's done right. Competitive prices, local service you can depend on. Come see us at 6202 Texoma Parkway in Sherman, online at CavenderHT.com, or give us a call, 903-892-3499. Local service is always better. Go Bulldogs! Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. Watch the onside right here as Leonard's going to fake it initially on the quail onside. 120 left to go in the third quarter. All knotted up. 21-21. A fight for second place, and it's a dog fight here. We told you to put your seatbelts on. Here's the high pooch kick. Going to be taken by Tyler Grisham at the 26-yard line. Coming near side, gets a block from Brandon Wall and bangs over Coley. Uh, to the 27-yard line, or 37-yard line, and that's where Hal will set up shop at their own 37 with 116 left to go in the third. Hal's second possession here in the second half. You know, Coley's a little guy, but he sure is awful tough. Like I said, he reminds me a lot of Stephen Ogle back in the mid-80s. A lot of old, older... I don't want to say old, but older How Bulldog fans will remember who I'm talking about. First to ten, Lopez sends Brandon Wall in motion, and he'll hand off Hawthorne left side looking for a seam. He's got a seam, and he carries a defender for 12 yards on first down. A great run, an individual effort by Hawthorne. Christian Faber uh, made the stop for the Tigers. You have to give it to Anthony Hawthorne tonight. He is completely strapped on the entire black offense on his back. The black jerseys are just been carrying. Uh, he's carrying them with him. Yes, he is. Tanner Hartsfield breaks the huddle, comes to the line of scrimmage on first and ten. Just past midfield into Leonard territory. This is a, another carry by Anthony Hawthorne. And he is going to be one tired young man after this football game is over. First, Dylan sorry. made the stop. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to step on you there. Second down and about six for Howe as they move left to right towards the south end zone. Kind of taking their time here. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. We're going to take a timeout when we come back. It'll be Bulldog quarter, and we're going to be knotted up at 21. Back in a moment with more How Bulldog football on HowEnterprise.com. Abby's Restaurant is family-owned and run. They have the cure for all your home cooking cravings. Chicken fried steak, loaded baked potato, bacon patty melt, grilled chicken salad, cheese fries, jalapeno stuffed peppers, and more. Don't forget to save room for that cheesecake and cobbler with ice cream. We know you're going to love the food and the service. Abby's Restaurant in downtown Howe. They're open from 11 to 8, Monday through Saturday. Give them a call, 903-487-8860. Abby's Restaurant. The Bulldogs make the playoffs and you get the payoff. Hi, this is Chris with Cavender Home Theater. Through November, we're going to give you a $100 Visa gift card just for signing up for Dish with Cavender Home Theater. That's on top of $400 in discounts and free installation. So get the hopper with the best DVR, more HD channels, commercial skip on recorded primetime shows, and lots of apps like Sports Finder and TV Anywhere. Upgrade your home and save money. Visit us at CavenderTV.com or call us at 901 Three eight nine two three four nine nine. Local service is always better. Go Bulldogs! For my welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. As uh, we are now in the Bulldogs quarter, twenty one twenty one. Leonard and Howe knotted up at this old classic stadium, the oldest stadium in North Texas. And it's a barn burner here. Second and six. Brandon Wall goes in motion. Lopez fakes the hand, wants to throw down the field, and he way overshoots his intended receiver, who uh, I believe got tangled up a little bit, and that was Zach Blevins. Was supposed to be down the field a little bit That's further, but I believe he got tangled up with someone. I believe that someone was Brent Hicks, the linebacker. Quentin Harris will bring in the play on third down and six. This is a very important 
down right here for Howe. It'll be a handoff to Wall coming near side. Leonard completely shuts it down. Even if Stratton Carroll got the hand on there, he would not go anywhere as Leonard had it shut down. They have been uh, basically, you can tell tonight that both times or three times that Howe's run that reverse, it's been completely shut down. Leonard has been working on that, you can tell, as it's fourth down now and punt time for the Howe Bulldogs. As Howe really needs to desperately pin them back deep here. Uh, Dylan Felton and Ian Malden made the stop for the Tigers. Overby will stand at about the 41-yard line. High snap, and he will kick it away. It will be a wobbly kick that will bounce out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. They're going to start at the 10 and actually get a pretty good spot there. 13-yard line is where Leonard will take over. First punt of the night by either team. And Leonard will take over at their own 13. We have 11.04 left to go in this football game. And the Bulldogs need a desperate stop right here on defense to shut the door on Leonard and get the ball back. Nixon will stand in shotgun formation. He sends a man in motion, and Nixon's going to keep it right up the middle. He's met by Hartsfield, and he will be brought down after a, a short gain. And it'll be second down and long for Leonard coming up. Yeah, Hart, uh, Hartsfield's been busy tonight. And Hartsfield making the stop. Hartsfeld put the pop on him, and he's made several pops tonight. He is. He's played a good ball game tonight. He's uh, been very busy. I can't wait to see these sophomores and freshmen in a couple of years. They're going to be fun to watch. 10.30 on the fourth quarter clock. Shotgun formation. Nixon digs it out, get, hands it off to Monk up the middle. He'll gain two or three yards, and it'll be third down and short situation for Leonard. And Monk is going to be another one of those who's going to be very tired. Andrew Griffin, again, Tanner uh, Hartsfield in on the stop. Third and three. School board says two. It's a long two. Leonard at their own 21-yard line. How needing a stop here. Hand off. Up the middle. And I believe Cole, Coley is going to fight his way forward. It's going to be very close to a first down. He initially was hit in the backfield. was going to be a loss, but he spun forward a little bit, and it's going to be very close. They may measure on this, but I think the official is actually going to say fourth down. It's fourth and one. Fourth and about a half a yard, and we'll see the punt team for Leonard for the first time tonight. A huge play right there for the Hal Bulldog defense. Fourth down, and then I don't see a punt. Leonard is putting all the chips on the table right here. Nixon, and now a timeout, perhaps, has been called by Hal. We'll take one, too. Back in a moment with more Hal Bulldog football on HowEnterprise.com. Hi, family. Life is a series of celebrations from my newest born cousin to my grandmother. We all partake in births, weddings, and funerals. Wherever we celebrate, we need to feel welcome. That's why we choose Scoggins Funeral Home and how. Scoggins Funeral Home understands our needs. Talk to the caring staff at Scoggins Funeral Home. Call 903-532-5577 or visit ScogginsFuneralHome.com. GCEC Wireless, located in Van Alstine off of Exit 51. Sorry, GCEC, we'll get back to you in just a moment as we are just about ready for an all the marbles kind of play right here. Leonard going for it on fourth and one at their own 24 yard line. And I guess Leonard says, hey, if we can't gain a yard, we don't deserve second place. And here's Nixon, handoff Monk, met in the backfield, but he squirts free, no, does he? Yes, I believe he does squirt free and get the first down. Just across the 25 yard line, that'll move the sticks. Oh, so close to taking over there and taking over this football game. Oh, 
JP Queen made the stop. Shane Fletcher showing some cojones there on fourth and one at their own 24. That was like Barry Switzer. Uh, well, they, uh, First and 10, here's the pitch out to Monk and Monk's got lots of room. He's got the 45 brought down by Merzinski at the 47 yard line, a gain of about 23 on first down. And a flag on the play. Braswell spots out the flag at the 35. And it is against Leonard. That's a huge play, or a huge flag penalty against Leonard. And the Bulldogs a bit lucky on that one. Instead of being, uh, ha instead of Leonard having the ball near midfield, they're going to back this one up to the 20 yard line. So, in effect, a 27 yard penalty. First and 15, 826 left to go in the game. All tied up, 21-21. Dixon and shotgun sends a man in motion. They're gonna hand off on the cross, and that is Monk, I believe, and he does gain about seven yards up to the 29-yard line. Dalton Felder, Anthony Hawthorne on the stop. Second down and six or seven. Seven says the scoreboard. Would you really like to see some of those guys playing that are standing on the sidelines down there in street clothes? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's several down there that you just wish were there. Showing blitz is Hartsfeld, and this will be a handoff up the middle. Not much doing there. It wasn't Hartsfeld, but it was some of his teammates to bring down Monk. Uh, Tristan Matthews made the stop. You know, poor, poor Stratton. He's walking, uh, he's walking him a little trench right here, back and forth in front of us. I know he's just dying to be out there. Into the game, into the backfield is. Brandon Benton instead of Monk. And Nixon wants to throw right side. And he's got a man that's caught a big tight end. And he will make the catch. And that's Mason Sargent, his second catch of the game. Will be good enough for another first down up to the 42-yard line. Still in Leonard territory. Just shy of midfield. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a big tight end. That is a big tight end. Sargent goes 215. And he's about 6'1". 647 left to go in the game. First and 10. Leonard moving left to right. And Nixon wants to keep it, rolling around the left side. He's being chased down by Queen, and he does finally bring him down, but not after a five-yard gain. Uh, Hawthorne getting on the stop is that on that as well. <laughs> Second down and four and a half. Leonard kind of taking their time now. Coley will split out right along with Anderson. And I believe that is Monk back in the game. And he gets the carry right here over right guard. He's in some traffic, but he fights forward and he has a nice individual effort there. Brought down by Merzinski after a first down run into Howe territory at the 46 yard line. You know, that, uh, again, you know, we said it, we say it, we say it. The safety having to make the stop. You know, you gotta, you gotta make a stop up front. He, didn't, he wouldn't have got that first down. Kiefer Rogers into the game at right defensive tackle. Also, I believe that's Matt Griffin on the outside edge. First and 10 for Leonard. Nixon, handoff. Monk, left side, lots of room, cuts it back inside. He's got another 10, 11 yard gain to the 35 yard line in Howe territory. And now it's just to the situation where Howe cannot stop the running game of Leonard. And if they're not careful, they're gonna chew up the rest of this clock, punch it in, and have no time left to tie it up. First and 10, Leonard. First and 10 on what, the 35? Yeah, this drive started at 11.04. We're at 5.04, handoff. Up the middle, 
And a nice six, seven yard gain there. And I believe on the carry is Brent Hicks on one of his few carries of the night. JP Queen and Kiefer Rogers made the stop. You know, JP Queen's played for a good game tonight. Yes, he has. It'll be second down at four now. You know, it's, it's, you look out there and see Hartsfield barking orders. He's, uh, you know, he stepped up and trying to lead out there. Here's a handoff again up the middle, and that's Garrett Wismer <laughs> on again, the carry. And again, J.P. Queen made the initial contact, and Hartsfield there in on top of him as well. 4.16 on the clock. We are at seven minutes on this drive now. An Charlie amazing Oldby. drive by Leonard. Charles Overby checked in for uh, Andrew Griffin. Third and short, third and one to be exact. 4.02 on the clock. All tied up, 21-21. Nixon and a flag down. This could be very big for the Bulldogs. False start against Leonard. Back him up, that stops the clock as well. So instead of third and one, it'll be third and six. 3.56 on the clock. And that's starting to become a factor in this football game. So, uh, you know, it, uh, it, the clock rolls and uh, you know, Leonard, uh, we'll see what they do. Third and six, handoff. Monk, right side. Hawthorne can't get him. Easton Ross and Felder finally do. And the bad thing is they can't throw him out of bounds. They get him in bounds. So it'll be fourth down. Easton Ross, Dalton Felder making the tackle. As the clock rolls at 324. And finally, I believe Hal took a timeout. And they do. We'll take one too. Back in a moment with more Hal Bulldog football on HowEnterprise.com. GCEC Wireless, located in Van Alstine off of Exit 51, can help you with all your Verizon wireless needs. They have a wide range of products and services, including smartphones, wireless home and mobile internet, wireless home phone service, and accessories. They're also your local DirecTV dealer. So come on by or call them at 903-712-2355. That's GCEC Wireless. And go Bulldogs! Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. As we're about to see a fourth down and two play here in the fourth quarter with Howe and Leonard knotted up at 21. Only 321 left to go in the game. Leonard will in fact go for, oh, this is fourth. They will in fact go for it here. Fourth and two. I can't stress how critical this play is for Howe. Shotgun, Nixon sends a man in motion. He wants to run the option. Left side, he's tackled from behind. Hawthorne grabs him from behind. The Bulldogs will take over. Hawthorne blitzed on the edge and got him from behind. Holy moly. 316 on the clock. Howe's got a chance. Quentin Harris will bring in the play. It's first and 10, moving right to left. Everybody tight. Lopez under center. Sends Hawthorne in motion. He gets the carry, coming near side, can't get that block. And he'll be brought down. That's the bad thing. You know, you think about Stratton Carroll and the things that he he misses. Well, you miss with him as far as the run game, but also critical block was missed right there. And that Carroll would have would have made to spring Hawthorne, but that block was not made by the youngster, and Hawthorne was tackled for only a three-yard gain, which could have been a lot more than that. 249 on the clock. And rolling. Second down and seven. Bulldogs come to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Lopez under center. Handoff. Hawthorne right side trying to bounce it out. And he carries defenders for about three yards. It'll be third and about three. 229 and rolling. Dylan Felton made the stop for uh, the Tigers. 
He's uh, he rolls in at 275 and a senior. He's worked pretty hard tonight himself. 215 and rolling. Just now bringing in the play. Zach Blevins. Third and three. Here we go. Lopez sends a man in motion. He's going to hand off Hoffa. Left side, looking for a hole. He's got the first down, and he can't get any more than that. Just at the first down marker to the 42-43 yard line. A timeout's been first called. Down. I believe, nope, no timeout yet. 149. As the clock stops momentarily to move the sticks. Garrett Wismer made the stop for the Tigers. Quentin Harris brings in the play. Coach Hudson stares at the clock, looks at the team, looks at the clock, looks at the team. First and 10, right to left, Lopez fakes the hand and gives it up the middle, nothing doing there. Met at the line of scrimmage is Hawthorne. It'll be second down and 10. Clock still rolling at 130, 129. Ian Malden, Dylan Felton in on the stop for the Tiger Short on the play. Second down and nine, and still no timeouts been called by Howe. 115 on the clock. Hawthorne in motion to give the hand to him. Running right side, trying to get a block by Grisham. Gets a block by Grisham. He's got the first down. Steps out of bounds at the 43-yard line in Leonard Territory. 105 on the clock, and Hawthorne did the smart thing of getting out of bounds there to stop the clock. One oh five on that clock. First and ten. Bulldogs huddle up. Brandon Wall into the game at the slot. Caleb Bank brings the play in. Hartsfield breaks the huddle, goes to the line of scrimmage. Everybody else follows him. Everybody tight. Lopez, handoff, Grisham coming to the left side of the offense, and he'll gain two yards. And now there's still hurry up offense. Still now. Now a timeout has been called. 54 seconds left to go in this football game, and Howe calls their first timeout of the second half. Again, did not use any in the first half, and we'll keep it right here as when the Bulldogs come back out on the field, it'll be second down and eight. Justin Baker made the stop for the Tigers. That's a, he's a new guy in there for them. Again, tied up here. How would desperately, desperately like to finish it off here in the regular, the regular time, and not face overtime. If, as if this game needed any more electricity and a little, a little bit more action. We're facing overtime. If How does not score here, of course, that's the second timeout for How. Okay, Stephen Braswell checks and says that's the second timeout. Here come the Bulldogs back out on the field. Trying to avoid overtime. Now all tied up 21, flag down before we can get underway. Instead of second down and eight, it's gonna be second down and 13. Ball start against Howe. Coach Hudson not happy. as the dogs have figured out without Carroll. Uh, 54 seconds on the clock. 54. 54 seconds on the clock. So they add a second back on it because the clock ran initially, but on the penalty, it, you do not lose a second on that clock. So they moved it back to 54. But what I was saying is Hal has figured out that they're going to have to ride the coattails of Anthony Hawthorne. And that's a dangerous thing, depending on one back here. And Hal Lopez wants to throw down the field. He's under pressure, and he's sacked in Leonard territory at the 48-yard line. Wanted to throw the ball down the field, trying to look for his receiver, Zach Blevins. But again, he was covered up. Lopez had nowhere to go with it, so he just held on to the football, took the sack at the 48. It's Ian third down. Ian Molden and Tristan Faber made the stop. 24 seconds and rolling. 20, 19, third down and 
about 15 here. It's going to be a handoff to Hawthorne. He'll make his way forward to the 39-yard line, and Hal may call a timeout here. Eight seconds, seven, six, five, four. Four seconds on the clock. Timeout's been called. Hal's going to face a fourth down. And six. Hal did a very smart job of... Well, actually, the clock has wound down, but we're going to check and see if Hal actually called a timeout or not. Shane Fletcher coming out from the other side, the Leonard head coach. And now the officials are talking about it. Right now, there's no time on the clock. The ball's at the 40-yard line. It'll be fourth down. The officials have spotted it there, and they're leaving it there. And they're going to put four seconds, I believe, on the board. Four seconds. Seven, I think it was eight seven. seconds. Uh, seven, eight, four. Who knows? Something like that. We're just, we just know we got more time on the clock. You would really have liked to have left one second on the clock before we, calling that timeout. We need to invest in a mic. <laughs> a coach's mic. Play yeah, that's mic. what we need. We need to mic somebody up. The bad thing about eight seconds on the clock is that it is fourth down. And if you don't get the first down here, there's a possibility that Leonard could snap the ball. Lopez under center, sends Hawthorne in motion. He'll get the carry on the right side, following Grisham, looking for a block. He has the first down, trying to get out of bounds. And he gets out of bounds with one second. One second on the clock. Powell will have one shot. First down. One Not shot. Number two. At the 30-yard line. Hawthorne has been rode like a horse tonight. I can't, we don't have the stats, but I can't imagine how many carries he's had tonight. It's got to be in the 30s. Yeah, pretty close. Oh, look at here. Honaker is going to get a shot to win this football game. It'll be a 37-yard attempt. Actually, I take that back. It'll be a 47-yard attempt. Well, you know. Why not? Why not? You know, you're knotted up. What, what do you have to lose? He's got the wind at his back. He'll be facing, trying to kick it through that north end zone. Easton Ross will hold. Bryce Honaker, the freshman, will try to bring it, bang it through for the game winner. And I'm pretty sure Leonard will try to ice him here and use a timeout. They have to watch out because Dylan Monk is standing in the end zone in case they miss this field goal. Monk can't run this back. He's standing in the back of the end zone. Honaker, it will be a 47-yard attempt and a school record if he makes it. It's a low-line drive and it'll be taken by Monk in the end zone. They're going to have to tackle Monk right here coming near side. He's got the football, and he's down at the 23-yard line, and we are going to overtime. Knotted up 21-21, to 21, looking for second place in the district, Howe and Leonard. Knotted up at Bulldog Stadium back in a moment with more Howe Bulldog football in overtime in just a moment on HowEnterprise.com. Think back to the best fried pie you've ever had. It won't compare to Sweetie Pies in Van Alstine. They have handmade apricot, apple, peach, buttermilk, chocolate, coconut, and lemon fried pies that melt in your mouth. Located at 120 South Main Street in Van Alstine on the east side of downtown. Give them a call at 903-712-PIES. That's 903-712-7437. Sweetie Pies can also make custom Howe cookies, muffins, and other baked goods. It's way too hot for your vehicle's A.C. to go out. Head over to 4A Automotive and Hal for their special air conditioning service checkup for just $39.95. 
For over 10 years, they've provided the most reliable and dependable service and repairs in the area. 4A Automotive is a bumper-to-bumper -bumper service shop. They do it all, from autos to diesels, and they're front-end specialists, too. So call 4A Automotive today at 903-546-0024. They're located four miles east of Howe at the corner of FM 902 and Luella Road. Come down to the Sonic and Howl for half price shakes after 8 and open until midnight, home games only, where you get great food and big smiles. And a little message for all our Howl football players Go, Bulldogs fight, Bulldogs win, win, win. Because it's not just good, it's Sonic good. We are in overtime. The coin toss is being made at midfield. The coaches are out there this time. Shane Fletcher and Zach Hudson. And looks like Coach Hudson won the toss. And Coach Hudson screams offense. And the Bulldogs cheer. Whatever happens. The rest of this game. This is the first, you know, in 20 years, this is the first overtime game I've ever done, believe it or not. In 20 years. Boy. Welcome. To yeah. Hey, how about that? Congratulations. Yeah, I finally stepped up. And I really, really wish that uh, the How Bulldogs put a restroom up here <laughs> in the press box because. <laughs> I'm not sure my bladder can hang on anymore. Well, We're going to be uh, in trouble here in just a few minutes. So I hope the Bulldogs score. Keep them out of the end zone. <laughs> As, uh, Roger Tidwell brings me a bottle and says, Hey, can you do this? We'll see. <laughs> I don't know. I think we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll try to hold it. Here comes the uh, superintendent, Kevin Wilson. Maybe we'll ask him. <laughs> we'll, uh, we're going to ask superintendent Kevin Wilson if we can get a restroom up here. Well, so, well, this is about as much as I can go. <laughs> here come the Bulldogs on first and ten. We are in overtime. Left to right, going towards the south end zone with the win in their face. Lopez comes out, hands off. Hawthorne drug down immediately, no gain here. And this is what happens when you uh, have to rely on one individual so much. When you lose Carroll, and, and really the Bulldogs have gone away from, from spreading it out to Tyler Grisham. And of course Carroll is gone. They have not depended on Brandon, Brandon Wall at all tonight. And Jaden Matthews only got one carry tonight, and he lost two yards on it. So I'm sure the confidence is not there yet from Coach Dale West. But at some point, you've got to be able to move it around a little bit. Lopez under center. Second and ten. Hand off Hawthorne right side. And he gains two. To the right side to about the 22-yard line. An injured Leonard player is down, but now he will get up. And that was uh, Justin Baker, the 220-pound senior defensive tackle. But he is up, and now he's fine. Third and seven. And again, if Howe does not score here, Leonard will get the ball, and if they score, they win. Third and seven. Lopez under center. And he's going to toss. Hawthorne looking for the edge. Trapped behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be fourth and ten. A loss of two on the play. One on the play. It'll be fourth and nine. Mason Sargent, Brent Hicks made the stop. They'll actually say he got to the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth and eight. And a timeout's been called. We will take one, too. Back in a moment with more Howbledock football on HowEnterprise.com. You're invited to the one and only Buck Snort Barbecue in downtown Van Alstine, Texas. Your friends and neighbors say it's the best barbecue in North Texas. Now it's your turn to decide. Come taste the difference at Buck Snort Barbecue. For complete store information, including menu, location, and hours, click on BuckSnortBBQ.com. That's BuckSnortBBQ.com. 
Bucks North Barbecue in downtown Van Alstine is a proud supporter of the Howl Bulldogs. Well, I've got to stop drinking coffee all day and drinking Di Dr. Peppers during the game. <laughs> Are you, uh, I see you sweating a little bit. <laughs> You've got the dance going. Something's going to come out. I don't, I'm not sure sweat. <laughs> Fourth down. <laughs> With an eight. You, I see the dance going over if, there. If it's an electrifying touchdown right here, we may have some cleaning up to do. <laughs> yeah, well, they, you, yeah. Fourth and eight. Lopez. We'll send Felder in motion. Felder gets the carry. Looking for a block. He's got a broken hand. He changes possession and direction, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage, and Leonard will get their shot. Mason Sargent made the stop. So Felder, for his first carry in a long while, because he has that broken arm, he got the toss on there. He was able to handle the football, but now Leonard will try to answer back. They'll have possession at the 25-yard line. And again, if they score, they win. And they have second place. First and 10 from the 25. Nixon, handoff. And that's going to be Monk. He's got lots of room. And he's gone. Up on the first play of overtime, Leonard scores. And they win. 27-21, and they are the second place finishers in District 5-3A. That is a tough way to lose a football game for Howe, but there is great news. They can't get their heads down right now because there's at least one more game to play. The Howe Bulldogs are in the playoffs, even though losing tonight, finishing 5-5, five and five, in the regular season, there is a playoff game, and hope continues for another week. Hats off to Anthony Hawthorne, who tried to carry the entire Howe Bulldogs on his shoulders with over 30 carries tonight. And just an outstanding performance. It looks like uh, we've got a Tiger slow getting up here on the, about the 20. Well, now he's tying his shoe. I think he'll be fine. Cow Bulldogs lose tonight in overtime. 27-21. We'll take a quick timeout. Be back in a moment with more Howe Bulldog football on HowEnterprise.com. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. Barely made it. But uh, what a great game. Leonard wins uh, for the second time in a row in overtime last week against Tom Bean. Double overtime. And uh, this week against Howe, 27-21, our final. It was a 25-yard run that capped it off. And I'm a little bit out of breath as I ran to the restroom. And uh, our final, 27-21. So let's recap this game. Howe won the initial toss and started at their own 33-yard line. Went 67 yards. It was 56-yard touchdown by Anthony Hawthorne that gave Howe the first lead, 7 to nothing, with 10:33 left to go in the first quarter. Thank you, Stephen Braswell. So Howe led 7 to nothing. That gave Leonard the ball on their first possession at their own 41-yard line. They drove 59 yards and took four minutes and 20 seconds off the clock when. Ryan Nixon scored from six yards out, his first touchdown of the night. The missed PAT gave Howe the lead, or left Howe with the lead, 7-6 to six with 6.09 left to go in the first quarter. Howe took the ball at uh, the Leonard 17-yard line after Joaquin Lopez returned the kickoff all the way to the 17. However, Howe could not capitalize on it and gave the ball over to Leonard with 3.39 left to go in the first quarter. And we talked about that, how really needed to capitalize on those possessions that they had deep in Leonard territory at the first part of the game. They were not able to do that. No, they uh, and they have to, you know, in this situation now, especially with the situation they're in, they're going to have to capitalize even for sure next week when they get in those positions. Leonard took the ball back 
uh, the, at their own 22-yard line, but immediately fumbled it when uh, Nixon tried to pitch it out to Monk, and J.P. Queen recovered the fumble, which gave Howe the ball at the 46-yard line in Leonard territory. Again, having good field position, could not do much with it. They turned the ball over on downs to Leonard, who took it over at their own 25-yard line. Yeah, we got to uh, got some activity going on here. We might want to get wet. Dylan Monk, two-yard touchdown on that drive, which capped off a 75-yard drive. And it was uh, Brent Hicks who scored on a two-point conversion to up the Leonard lead, 14-7, to with 4.43 left to go in the first quarter. Al took the ball back at the Leonard 48-yard line. Four, third time in a row to have possession inside Leonard territory. This time they capitalized on it as Tyler Grisham caught a 38-yard touchdown pass from Joaquin Lopez. It was Lopez's first touchdown of the year. That tied the game at 14 with 2.49 left to go before the half. Leonard took it at their own 48 and had to turn it over on downs, which gave Howe the ball at their own 27. And that was the end of the half as Howe did not uh, try to do anything and just basically when it was were content with going to the half, tied 14-14. In the opening second half, Hal was to kick off to Leonard, and they did, but it was an onside kick in which J.P. Queen recovered. And that was ended by a one-yard touchdown by Anthony Hawthorne, his second of the night. That gave Hal the early lead in the second half, 21 to 14, with 6.33 left to go in the third quarter. Leonard took the ball back at their own 41-yard line with 6.33 left to go in the third, and they ended up scoring on a two-yard touchdown by Ryan Nixon to tie the game at 21 with 1.20 left to go uh, in the third quarter. We saw our first punt of the night right before the, the fourth quarter started with Howe with 1.16 left. Howe punted back to Leonard, who took the ball at their own 13-yard line. A nice punt by Charlie Overby, and Leonard started a massive drive it was a seven and a half minute drive that basically killed the end of the game. Howe took the ball over on downs with about a minute left, but had no chance to do anything with it. Felder ended up getting a carry and uh, was tackled behind the line for no gain. And that ended, um, that was actually an overtime. And that ended that Howe's overtime period. Leonard got the ball back with their chance to score in overtime, and Dylan Monk took it on the first play from 25 yards out to give Leonard the win, 27-21. Leonard moves uh, to 8-1 on the season, 4-1 in district play. Hal moves to 5-5 five five on the season, and 3-2 and in district play. Hal will represent District 5-3A as the third place uh, seed and Leonard will go in as the second place seed. Uh, Zach Hudson is now eight and 12 at Howe. And I'll tell you what, this was a nail biter. I told everybody to put your seat belts on because it was gonna be a bumpy ride and it was, but what a great game it was. It didn't turn out the way the Howe Bulldog fans wanted it, but it uh, was a great game. Yes, it was. It was, uh, it was a good game. I, I figured it would be a tough, well matched game and, and it was it was uh, it was back and forth they did, they both did tremendous jobs they they uh, they worked hard at it they both got good opportunities to uh, to make good stout runs in the playoffs so we'll see what happens you know you'd like to have seen how in full force yes you know would. with a with a healthy uh, Stratton Carroll and a healthy Minivar and a healthy Portman and you'd love to see what the Howe Bulldogs would have done with with three of their main cogs right and uh, without those players it, it proved to be a little bit difficult yeah it, Anthony Hawthorne had to be a one-man show tonight yeah he did and uh, you know uh, we'll see how it plays out uh, looks like you know we may may draw Cooper uh, we draw Cooper we'll see how that works uh, just depends on what direction and what happens tonight when they get uh, at their meeting in Greenville. Well, we'll we'll find out. I'll try to have information on HowEnterprise.com as soon as we can talk to Coach Hudson tonight after they meet in Greenville. 
will know uh, location and date and time and all of that information should know late tonight and as soon as I know I'll post it along to the rest of the Howites yeah, across I'm, I'm, the land. I'm excited. I'm, I'm ready. We uh, will carry all the playoff games as, as long as they'll let us. Uh, I know UIL, they, they may throw some, some stuff at us and make us run some of their commercials, but that's okay. We're going to keep broadcasting it as long as we can. We'll, see, we'll keep going, and, and uh, we hope that we have six more weeks to go. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, uh, I wouldn't mind playing at uh, Christmas time. That'd be, that'd <laughs> that be, would be that, nice. That would be an experience. I've, I've never, you know, had the opportunity to, but th it would be fun. We'll let you know when and where. And check it all out on HowEnterprise.com because as soon as I know, you'll know. For everyone who's been a part of this one, including Stephen Braswell and Michael Mosier, I'm Monty Walker. From Bulldog Stadium, an overtime loss to the Leonard Tigers. So long, everybody. You've been listening to How Bulldogs Football. How Bulldogs Football has been brought to you by Abby's Restaurant, GCEC Wireless, Scoggins Funeral Home, Buck Snort Barbecue, Cavender Home Theater, SAP Consulting, Sweetie Pies, Fast Signs, Curie's Coffee Company, 4A Automotive, and Sonic. He pushes his way in. It is touchdown time in Texas for the first time in the 2014 season. Texas.